Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfection. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto the bloodthirsty Jinchuriki consumed demonic powers of underworld? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. It was a quiet night in the village hidden in the leaves. The citizens were going to their homes and closing up their shops. Everyone stopped when off in the distance they saw death. The Kayubi no Kitsune, nine-tailed fox, was rampaging off in the distance and headed straight for the village. Villagers started running the opposite direction in a panic as fast as they could to get away from the fox's rampage, at the same time the Chunin, Jonin, and Anbu were rushing to the front lines to try and stop the fox's advance on their village while the Jenin were evacuating the civilians. And Anbu knelt before the former cage and current frontline commander, Sandame Sama the Kayubi has reached the walls of the village, what are your orders? The Sandame was currently wondering where his successor was in a crisis like this, we will hold the line and buy time for the Yandaimi. The Anbu left with a hi, to inform the other shinobi. Frontline's Kayubi was angry, no he was beyond angry he was livid. First he was being controlled by Uchiha Madara then he is captured by the Shodem and sealed then when he is finally free he is once again being controlled by an Uchiha and their cursed eyes. He didn't want to attack Konoha, hell he wanted to find get the hell away from Konoha and find somewhere to never be disturbed again, but it seemed Kami had other plans for him which explains his current situation. He swore if he ever got out of the Uchiha's control he would destroy him the most painful way possible. Namikaze clan estate Minato Namikaze, Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha, Konoha no Kiroi Senko, Konoha's Yellow Flash, and the only shinobi to receive an sulfur monosulfide rank bingo book entry was currently conflicted with the situation at hand and wondered what he could do to stop the Kyubi. Unfortunately he would always reach the same conclusion, sealing it, the question was who could he seal it into. He knew he could never ask one of his subordinates to sacrifice one of their children to become the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi and to make things worse his son Naruto had just been born and lost his wife after the Kayubi had been released from her, but could he really sacrifice his son to the life of a Jinchuriki with no one to take care of him or look out for him? Yes he would have to he was the Hokage and the village came first. Hopefully Serutobi-sama could protect Naruto and raise him right. He grabbed Naruto from his crib and disappeared in a yellow flash to the front lines. Front lines Serutobi didn't know what to do. Everything they threw at the Kayubi would do nothing but anger it more. He knew that once the Kayubi breached the walls there would be a lot more casualties. All of a sudden a large object fell from the sky and pinned the Kayubi to the ground. When the surrounding shinobi looked closer they saw a giant dull red toad comparable in size to the Kayubi wearing a navy blue vest and carrying a dosu blade at his back with the yandaimi hokage on the toad's head. We're saved! yelled a random shinobi, it's yandaimi sama, yelled another random shinobi. Serutobi sighed, he knew with Minato here they would have a chance at defeating the Kayubi. Then just as soon as they arrived the yandaimi, toad, and Kayubi disappeared in a yellow flash. Outskirts of Konoha far away from the battlefield on the outskirts of Konoha stood the Kayubi, Gamabunta, and his summoner the Yandaimi Hokage. Minato turned to address Gamabunta, Bunta I need you to hold down the Kayubi while I seal it. Gamabunta responded, I'll try and hold him down as much as possible but he is still the Kayubi I won't be able to hold him down for too long. Minato nodded and started to a long sequence of hand seals and yelled out, Shiki Fujin. When he did the Shinigami appeared above him and reached for the Kayubi who was struggling frantically to get away from the Shinigami, but was too late as the Shinigami reached inside Kayubi and ripped out its yin chakra. With its yin chakra sealed inside Minato the Kayubi was reduced in size and Minato used this chance to seal the Kayubi's yang chakra and yelled out, Hake no Fuin Shiki, completely sealing the Kayubi in Naruto. Minato looked at his son with tears in his eyes, I'm sorry it had to be this way Naruto, I wish I could be here to protect you, but I hope the villagers treat you like the hero you are. Know that I will always be proud of you. With his last words Minato Namikaze died and his soul was devoured by the Shinigami. This is the scene Serutobi walked in on. A dead successor, a crying baby, and destruction all around. He automatically knew what had happened as it was obvious considering that the child still had the seal pulsing on its stomach. 
Konoha Council Room Two hours later Serutobi Hirazan was walking into the council room to receive a damage report of the village in the aftermath of the Kayubi attack. Once all the council members were gathered Serutobi cleared his throat to get their attention. Now that we are all here, what is the situation of the village? asked Hirazan. Konoha's chief merchant answered Serutobi, the attack made by the Kayubi has crippled the financial district and reduced out revenue by 40%. Serutobi nodded, how many casualties, both shinobi and civilian? Murkamina Takanibu, Konoha's executive of the Medic Nin program, spoke next, we have lost a total of 60,000 people in the Kayubi attack, over 46% of Konoha's total population. Of the 60,000 people dead, 18,000 were shinobi and the rest were civilians. Serutobi nodded sadly again, very well, now with the damage report finished, I can guess you would all like to know how the Kayubi was defeated? Everyone in the council room nodded their heads. The Yandaimi was not powerful enough to kill the Kayubi, no one would be able to kill the Kayubi because Biju are only large masses of chakra with a conscious, knowing this the Yandaimi did the only thing he could do. He sealed it into someone with Uzumaki blood, the only Uzumaki that was known was Uzumaki Kashina. She had given birth to a boy today as such the new container is of Uzumaki blood. Serutobi thought if he should tell them who Naruto's father was. Let's see how they react to Naruto being the new container, if they call out for his death I won't tell them. All of a sudden the council room erupted in rage, the civilian council called for Naruto's death while the shinobi council stayed silent. We must kill the demon, yelled one civilian council member. Kill the demon, it must not be allowed to exact its revenge, yelled another. The civilian side continued to call for blood for a good five minutes until Serutobi released a large amount of key to quiet them down. Serutobi knew this would happen, he kicked himself for letting the civilian side know about Naruto's Jinchuriki status. Nothing he could do now except hope everything works out for the best, he was especially wary of the looks the Warhawk Danzo and the power-hungry Uchiha Fugaku were giving Naruto. Now that you all know of his status as a container, the next order of business is a new Hokage. Since I am the only one qualified to rebuild Konoha, I believe I will step back up to the position, said Serutobi. I think you aren't the only one qualified to take the position of Hokage, I am another good candidate for the position of Hokage, interrupted Danzo. That may be true Danzo, but right now the village is in a panic. If I take the chair of Hokage again, the people will calm down knowing that someone as experienced and respected as me is leading them again away from the dark times we are experiencing, countered Serutobi. Everyone in the council room nodded in agreement, Danzo just scowled at Serutobi. You win this round Serutobi, but I will make sure that I have the Kayubi on my side, thought the Warhawk. Hokage-sama, now that we have elected a new Hokage who will take care of the Kayubi container? Asked Uchiha Fugaku. As of now, young Naruto-kun is an orphan like so many others in the aftermath of the Kayubi attack, answered Serutobi. Then I petition that the boy be given to the Uchiha clan for adoption, since it is that he is an orphan, said Fugaku. I think the boy should be better trained as a weapon, he contains the most powerful of the biju and could be a valuable asset for the village, I ask that the Kayubi container be placed under my care so that he can be trained as a weapon for the village, said Danzo. No Danzo I will not give you the boy to train to be an emotionless killer at a young age, and I won't give him to you Fugaku since it would upset the balance of power between clans, answered Serutobi. Danzo narrowed his eyes, then what will you do with the boy Hirazan? Young Naruto-kun will be placed in the orphanage until he is old enough to be placed in an apartment, answered the Hokage. Danzo scowled but nodded nonetheless, he would have to wait until he got his hands on the Kayubi container. Nara Shikaku asked, Hokage-sama, what will we do with the civilian masses they will undoubtedly call for the child's life? Serutobi thought for a few seconds before he gave his answer, from this point on young Naruto-kun's status as the Kayubi container is in sulfur monosulfide rank secret, anyone that breaks it will be executed on the spot with no trial. Serutobi dismissed the council and hoped he had done enough to help Naruto grow up as a normal boy. Kayubi's cage during the meeting Kayubi watched the meeting from his cage inside the seal with interest mostly because they would be deciding his fate. When the meeting ended he knew that he would be safe for the time being but he also knew that humans were very predictable and he had no doubt that the civilian council members would most likely try to assassinate his container, he would have to prevent that or else he would die as well because without his yin chakra it might not have enough strength to reform. 
Typical humans always afraid of what they don't understand. Then again this could be fun. Once this kid is old enough I will be able to train him and then I will show them the demon they despise so much and what better way to show them then by having the son of their precious Yandaimi Hokage destroying them ha ha ha. Kayubi began contemplating the ways he would be destroying Konoha in the future. Six years later Naruto was sadly walking down the street. He had just been kicked out of the orphanage because that matron had said, demons aren't allowed here anymore. He didn't understand why she called him a demon. He was just a kid like all the others at the orphanage. The matron never let him learn how to read or write because she would always saw, demons don't deserve to learn how to read or write, she didn't even give him enough to eat and he would sometimes go to bed hungry. He didn't want to remember the times when he would wander the village and have a mob go after him almost every time and leave him beaten and injured. He tried to forget all the bad times he had there, he then started remembering all the good times he had. He remembered the kind old man that would visit on his birthday and take him out for ramen and the kind ramen cooks that would always serve him with a smile. He would always leave the ramen stand with a smile. While he was reminiscing he hadn't noticed that he stepped into the slums of the village and had a couple drunks following him. He snapped out of his daydream when he felt a bottle shatter next to him, he turned to see a group of six drunks running and yelling at him. It's the demon get him. One drunk slurred. Don't let him get away. Yelled another. Needless to say Naruto started running as fast as he could to get away from the drunks until he turned a corner and found himself in an alley trapped with no escape route. He was first hit by a bottle in the side of the head, he felt he was bleeding a lot and yelled in pain. Another got closer with a bat and hit him in the gut. Naruto hunched over and fell on his stomach in pain then everything went black. Naruto's mindscape Naruto was currently walking through a sewer where the water reached his knees, he had no idea where the hell he was and started exploring hoping to find out. He suddenly heard a deep voice calling out to him. He followed the voice and reached a room with a large cage in front of him with the kanji for, seal, on the door. Come closer, Naruto obeyed the voice and soon saw two red slit eyes looking at him. Kayubi then asked him, Do you know who I am? Naruto looked at the creature more closely and saw aside from his eyes he also had the body of a fox and nine swishing tails behind him. He started thinking and remembered a creature matching this description in a book he has read before the matron had taken it away. Naruto knew what this creature was and what it did so he answered with as much courage as he could muster, you're the Kayubi no Kitsune. Kayubi just looked at him and grinned before talking. I'm glad you know who I am it will make what I am about to tell you easier, you are going to die. Naruto just looked at him in shock, what do you mean I'm going to die and where am I? Kayubi started explaining, we are in you mindscape you came here after you blacked when those humans attacked you. Naruto started remembering what had happened and realized something, wait so you mean I'm still alive? Very good kit, yes you are still alive and I called you here because I want to help you survive and protect yourself. Help me how are you going to help me? You're stuck in a cage? Asked Naruto. That may be true but I can still give you my chakra to help you fight. All you need to do is rip off a little part of the seal, aside from being able to use my chakra you will also gain my heightened sense of smell and hearing and we will also be able to communicate through the seal. So hurry up and rip off part of the seal and kill these worthless humans, said Kayubi losing his patience. Naruto suddenly remembered his proclamation to the old man. Flashback Naruto was currently inhaling his ramen with the Hokage sitting next to him. GG what's that funny hat on your head, you're always wearing it? Asked Naruto curiously. Serutobi turned to face Naruto and said, this hat Naruto-kun is the hat of the Hokage. Naruto looked at the Sandame confused, what's a Hokage? The Hokage is the strongest shinobi in the village Naruto-kun, proclaimed Serutobi with his chest puffed out. It deflated when Naruto responded, but you're really old how are you the strongest shinobi in the village? Serutobi just chuckled at his response, well Naruto-kun the Hokage is also the person who everyone acknowledges and protects the entire village and villagers from danger. Naruto just beamed at what Serutobi had said, he had always wanted to be acknowledged by the villagers instead of being glared at by looks of hate. That's when Naruto made his proclamation, awesome you better watch out Gigi because I'm the one who's going to take that hat from you and become the next Hokage that's a promise. Serutobi chuckled before responding, I hope Naruto-kun I can see that you have the will of fire burning brightly in you. End flashback. I don't want to kill them I promised I would protect them and become Hokage, yelled Naruto. Kayubi then lost his patience, why would you protect them they are trying to kill you, 
you should be returning the favor. When are you going to realize that they will always hate you as long as I am with you? You will never be Hokage because they will always hate you. You should make them fear you make them pay. That fool Serutobi doesn't care about you otherwise he would never had let these fools hurt you and despise you. Naruto just started digesting everything Kayubi had told him and realized he was right. The villagers would always hate him and never acknowledge him because he would always be seen as the demon he imprisoned. That was when Naruto finally lost a hope and realized that only Kayubi would be looking out for him and no one else. It was him and Kayubi against the world he then approached the cage and reached for the seal and ripped off a small piece. He was suddenly overcome with a feeling of immense power and bloodlust he then noticed he was waking up. Alley inside the alley the six drunks were currently kicking Naruto while he was unconscious all of a sudden there was a bright red light accompanied by an immensely evil power that threw the drunks away. In the alley stood Naruto but there were changes to his appearance like his longer fangs, his whisker marks darkened, his hands turned into claws, and he was surrounded by a cloak of red chakra that took the form of a fox with a single tail swishing behind him. He wasted no time feeding his bloodlust and extending his hand and sending a chakra claw to grab the closest villager. The villager screamed in pain as the chakra claw burned his body before he was crushed and thrown away like trash. Naruto moved on to the next two drunks, he slammed his hands in the ground and two massive chakra claws erupted from the ground and grabbed their head before squishing them like grapes, there was blood all over the street and on Naruto's clothes. He was going to kill the remaining three when a voice spoke to him. Kit you need to finish off these three quickly I can sense the Hokage and a couple more coming this way. Naruto mentally nodded using his advanced speed to quickly slice the last three drunks heads off before leaving the area and dispelling his chakra cloak. Outskirts of Konoha. What now Kayubi? Asked Naruto. We should leave the village for a while until the village calms down. While we're out we can start your training and call me Karama that's my name, explained Karama. Naruto nodded while running out of an unguarded gate and making his way into the forest, normally he would be exhausted by now but Kurama was pumping small amounts of Yuki into his body to fight the exhaustion. He was told by Kurama to lose his scent by jumping into a stream and washing the scent of blood off to throw off any pursuers that would go after him. He made it about 15 miles before collapsing into a cave exhausted and hungry. Kurama decided to use this time to make him an interesting offer. Het kit I was wondering if you want a keke janke? Naruto looked confused. What's a keke jenke? Kayubi sweat dropped, he should have known he would say that he was only a kid. He sighed and started explaining what a keke jenke was to Naruto. A keke jenke is the abilities passed down genetically within specific clans. Keke jenke abilities that work using a person's eye are called dojutsu. Other keke jenke include mixing one type of elemental chakra with another, creating a new one unique to the users which is usually impossible for normal ninja, or other bodily manipulations that are usually unachievable by normal standards. Some dojutsu are the Byakugan, Rinnegan, and the Sharingan. Some elemental keke jenke are ice release, wood release, magnetic release, storm release, lava release, dust release, and boil release. When he was finished he could tell Naruto was amazed. How is that possible you said that they are genetically made for specific clans? asked Naruto. Kurama just gave him a grin before responding, well part of me being the Kayubi is that I am able to use my chakra and rearrange and add new genes to your DNA so I could give a new keke jenke, but I can only give you one because changing DNA is very dangerous, painful, and require a lot of chakra. When you are older I might be able to give you another one. So what do you say? Naruto thought a lot about what Kayubi was saying and decided that it would be cool to have a new power so he agreed to it but he told Kurama to surprise him on what keke jenke he would get. All right get ready this is going to be painful. Oh and you will probably be unconscious for a couple days Kurama warned. Naruto mentally nodded before leaning down against the wall and feeling extreme pain before passing out. Serutobi Hirazan was having a bad day. First he started the day with a mountain of paperwork, then when he was leaving the office he felt the same power that he felt on one sad day six years ago. When he arrived at the scene accompanied by a squad of Anbu, he couldn't believe what he saw, there in the middle of the street there were the bodies of six people. Three of them had their heads sliced off, two had their heads crushed, and the final one had had his body crushed. It looked like a bloodbath but whoever did it was nowhere to be seen, Serutobi turned to one of the Anbu to give him orders. Inu, dog. I need you to find and bring Naruto Uzumaki to me, commanded Serutobi. The silver-haired Anbu left with a, hi, 
and went to track down Naruto. Serutobi knew what this meant. He would have to call a council meeting and inform them of this and they would demand his head which he wasn't sure if he could stop them this time. This was a tight predicament he was in and he hoped he could get Naruto out of it because he was like a grandson to him. He left to call a council meeting so he would have the excuse that he already told them of the situation, instead of them using this to further undermine his authority. With Inu, Dog, in Konoha there were only a handful of people that knew Naruto's true heritage as the son of Minato Namikaze and Uzumaki Kashina. Jiraiya of the Sanin, the Sandame Hokage, and Hitaki Kakashi. Kakashi always saw Naruto as the son of his late sensei and not a demon like the majority of Konoha. Kakashi always wanted to repay his sensei by taking care of his son but the Sandame stopped him from adopting Naruto because he thought Naruto being an orphan would be better for everyone. Look at the situation that brought. Naruto was isolated and abused for the first six years of his life and it seems that today he finally snapped and killed his attackers thought Kakashi. I hope I can find him soon, thought Kakashi as he continued deeper into the forest following the scent of blood. Konoha council room the civilians were in an uproar. After Serutobi had told them what happened with Naruto they acted as expected with demands of his head and his imprisonment. The shinobi side was quiet Danzo and Fugaku were thinking of ways to turn this in their favor, while the other clan heads were silently hoping Naruto isn't losing control. Finally the civilians were silenced with a blast of key from the Sandame. We cannot jump to conclusions as an investigation is underway and we will find out if it was murder or self-defense on young Naruto-kun's part. The civilians didn't like his response and went into an uproar again only to be silenced once again by the Sandame's killing intent. The room was silent for a few moments until Danzo broke it. Hiruzen what will you do the child should he be found guilty of murder? I request that if he is guilty, he be turned over to me to be give emotional training. Serutobi responded with a frown. No Danzo if he is found guilty, which I find highly unlikely, he will be given the same punishment all civilians are given. With that said Serutobi dismissed the council and headed to his office. Naruto's mindscape Naruto woke up back in front of the cage that jailed Kurama. He didn't know what happened until Kurama started explaining. Don't worry Kit, you're alright you just fell unconscious after I started rewriting your DNA. While you're here I want you to sign this, Kurama placed a scroll with the kanji for fox on it in front of Naruto. It's the fox summoning contract so that you can call my kin to help you in battle, explained Kurama as Naruto signed the contract. Awesome this is going to be awesome, by the way did you decide what bloodline you were going to give me? asked Naruto curiously. Kurama just gave him a foxy grin before answering, you know the body of an Uzumaki is truly amazing. Any normal human would most likely be killed if I try to change their DNA. But you I was able to give you two bloodlines before your body would start to shut down. Naruto just looked at him in disbelief. One bloodline would have been awesome but two would just make him crazy with excitement. Stop stalling which did you give me? Asked Naruto barely able to keep his excitement contained. You should consider yourself lucky. Normally I would hate these two bloodlines I'm giving you but I want to see the looks on the faces of those damn villagers when you reveal the two bloodlines of their most prestigious clans, grinned Kurama. You mean, Naruto was interrupted by Kurama who finally told him. That's right I gave you the Mokutan bloodline of the Shodem Hokage and a fully matured Sharingan, answered Kurama with a little venom in his voice when he mentioned the Uchiha clan's bloodline. Naruto was just speechless the two strongest bloodlines in the world, Mokutan and the Sharingan and he was able to use them both at the same time. He couldn't wait to wake up and start training. So how long have I been unconscious? Asked Naruto. Around two days, don't worry you should be waking up any second now, said Kurama. With that Kurama went back to sleep and Naruto waited to wake up and train with his new powers. With Inu, Dog, Kakashi had been tailing Naruto and the scent ended when they reached a river. He continued searching for two days only to find nothing and start heading back to Konoha to report to the Hokage. He couldn't believe how he failed he felt he failed his sensei by not protecting his legacy. As he made his ways back to Konoha he could only hope that Naruto would return to the village. With Naruto Naruto had just woken up and he was feeling amazing, not only did he have two new bloodlines, he was going to start training today. Kurama told him how he had a large amount of chakra and already had low janin reserves at the age of 6 due to him being sealed inside him. Currently Naruto was practicing the cage bunshin no jutsu, shadow clone technique. Kurama said if he could master this jutsu it would make training 10 times easier. Kurama sensei, 
when do you think I can start training with my bloodlines? asked Naruto. Soon first we will need to break into the Uchiha and Senju compounds and look for information on how to properly use them. After a few hours of training Naruto finally mastered the cage Bunshin no Jutsu and collapsed in exhaustion. Kit tomorrow we should go back to the village, so we can continue our training. Alright we'll leave tomorrow morning, responded Naruto before falling onto the sweet bliss of sleep. Next day Hokage Tower the next afternoon the Sandame Hokage was sitting at his desk reading a small orange book with a perverted smile and a small nosebleed. He was so into the book, he never noticed the figure in front of his desk. I never knew you were a pervert Gigi, smirked Naruto. Serutobi paled when he looked over his book and saw a smirking Naruto with his hand crossed over his chest. The Sandame quickly composed himself and tried to save what little dignity he had by hiding the book and looking as if nothing happened. Naruto sweat dropped when Serutobi put the book away and whistled as if nothing happened. Naruto decided to move on and began talking. I guess you want to know what happened right? The old Hokage looked at him and nodded his head. Well let's start at the beginning when I was kicked out of the orphanage I was wandering the streets and six drunks came out of nowhere and started chasing me. I tried to get away but I was forced into an alley and got knocked out then I woke up somewhere far away in the forest, Naruto hoped the old Hokage would buy his story. This morning he had been told by Kurama to no mention his involvement or their conversation. The old Hokage was listening intently to every word Naruto said and when Naruto finished he took a large drag from his pipe. The Sandame decided to believe Naruto and put his faith in him. Very well Naruto-kun, I'm sorry that you got kicked out I have already made arrangements for you in a new apartment, said the Sandame relieved that Naruto hadn't killed those men on purpose and handing him the keys and address to the apartment. Gigi I have a request, asked Naruto. The Sandame's ears perked up. What kind of request Naruto-kun? I want to enroll in the academy and learn how to be a ninja, lied Naruto. He didn't need the academy to learn how to be a ninja but he did need an excuse of how he was becoming more powerful. Very well Naruto-kun, I will enroll you next semester in four months, until then you will have some free time. Thank you Gigi, Naruto bowed before he left with a smirk on his face. After Naruto left Serutobi had taken out his book out once again and started giggling perversely with a small trickle of blood going down his nose. Four months later over the past four months, Naruto had used the time to train with the help Kurama and Shadow Clones. He had started by improving his chakra control by making dozens of clones perform the tree and water walking exercises. He would then do physical exercises himself because clones couldn't transfer physical activity back to the original. While the clones did the exercises, he would have Kurama take the consciousness of a clone and have it teach him the basic of Kitsune-style taijutsu which would depend on quick devastating attacks before withdrawing. Kurama also started teaching him Kitsune-style Kenjutsu which focused on performing quick attacks and taking advantages of openings. Naruto was also learning Fuenjutsu from Kurama although he didn't know advanced Fuenjutsu, he did know enough from his time spent as a prisoner in two very powerful seal masters. Naruto was currently getting dressed in his black anbu pants, blue sandals, fingerless gloves, red t-shirt, with a black janin style vest on top. Naruto then reached for his Rizaburado, Hellraiser blade, that Kurama had given him forged by the foxes, he placed the katana inside a seal painted on his arm. He couldn't put it on his back because he didn't want people to ask questions. He also checked his other two seals on his left and right wrist that held shuriken and kanai respectively. If there was one thing he hated about his new change it was that he didn't eat as much ramen as before. Kurama had told him that ramen was unhealthy and the number one reason he was so short so he was forced to give up ramen and only allowed to eat it once a week, but that didn't mean he could eat 40 bowls once a week. Naruto finished preparing and started making his way down the street toward the academy, he ignored the glares and mutterings of the villagers. Keep talking you ignorant bastards, one day I'll show you and the rest of this damn village a real demon thought Naruto with an evil smirk. Don't worry kid they won't know what hit them when you're done with them, said Kurama. Academy classroom as Naruto entered the class he could see that they all stood silent when he entered the room, he just ignored them and made his way to an empty row to take a seat. After five minutes a boy with a puppy on his head walked toward Naruto he had messy brown hair, sharp black eyes with vertical slit-like pupils, pronounced canine teeth and red fang marking on his cheeks. Everyone stopped to look at the two. Kiba had thought that if he picked on Naruto he would instantly be popular and make more friends, how wrong he was. 
Hey what do you think you're doing here, that's my chair, said Kiba. Naruto responded emotionlessly, get lost mutt I don't want to have to deal with you. Kiba was pissed at how the class loser dismissed him, who do you think you are, you're just some no-name loser with no parents, so why don't you go back to the orphanage. Naruto was usually very calm and insults wouldn't faze him but he knew if he didn't take care of this idiot now, he would probably get picked on for the next six years. As Kiba continued taunting and insulting him, Naruto slowly got up from his chair. What's wrong you gonna crossing? Kiba never finished his sentence as Naruto grabbed him by the throat and lifted him into the air. Kiba started struggling to breath and clawed at Naruto's hand. Listen to me mutt. I'm not going to take your or anyone else's shit so I got one thing to tell you and everyone else who thinks it's smart to mess with me, leave me alone and I'll leave you alone, if you don't them your parents are going to find themselves attending your funeral. You got that? said Naruto with a large amount of Kurama's key flooding the room. Kiba only nodded dumbly before he was released and dropped on the ground as he took deep breaths. Everyone was just silent shaking in fear at what had happened. Everyone now knew not to mess with the blonde. Just then two Chunin entered the strangely quiet room, wondering what had happened that everyone was so quiet. They soon started the roll call and stopped at Naruto's name and look at him. He knew they were probably haters and knew this would be a bad year. Just then one of the teachers started talking. Good morning students, my name is Aruka and this is Mizuki, we will be you academy teachers and use the next six years training you in the basics of being a ninja. Now let's start by going over what chakra is, lectured Aruka. Aruka then started lecturing, but Naruto had already nodded off and ignored them knowing it was nothing important. At the end of the day he left the academy and headed home to make dinner. He knew it would be a long six years. Over the last two years Naruto had gone through rigorous training mastering Kurama's Kitsune Taijutsu and Kenjutsu styles. He had also broken into the Senju clan compound and made copies of Senju Hashirama's Mokuton scrolls to learn from, he knew he couldn't steal them because they might blame him if only from their blind hatred. He was able to infiltrate the compound only because the clan was all but extinct and had a few patrols. The Uchiha clan was another story. Naruto hadn't been able to infiltrate their compound because they had a lot of alert members patrolling from the inside. He decided he would have to wait for a while before he could infiltrate and learn more about his Sharingan. Naruto was currently in his apartment returning from training in his Mokuton bloodline, he was about to go to sleep before Kurama started talking. Kit do you sense that? Naruto stopped for a minute and started using his sensory skill he gained from Kurama. Yeah. I sense a large amount of death and the scent of blood. Naruto thought with a bloodthirsty grin. Aside from increased sensory abilities, Naruto also gained a large bloodlust from Kurama's increased chakra output. Without missing a beat Naruto made his way toward the location that had a strong scent of blood. Uchiha clan compound Naruto arrived at the Uchiha clan compound, he made his way inside and was shocked to see that there were dead bodies littering the streets. It looks like a massacre, I wonder who killed them? thought Naruto. Whoever it is I want to meet them and shake their hand, said Kurama, happy that someone finally decided to destroy the cursed clan. Just then Naruto sensed that someone was nearing him and he quickly hid behind some nearby trash cans. He then saw the person was no other than Sasuke, who was looking at the dead bodies that filled the streets. Sasuke started running down the street to what looked like the clan head estate, Naruto decided to follow him. When Sasuke went inside he could hear some voices then a scream of pain. After five minutes he saw a tall figure wearing an Anbu outfit leaving the house and Sasuke following after him. They started talking but Naruto could care less as he made his way toward the Uchiha clan archives and went inside. There he saw shelves of scrolls, he knew this archive held every jutsu ever copied by an Uchiha and a lot more. He made twenty clones and they started making copies of the, the scrolls. After he was done he could sense that large groups of Anbu were approaching and he wanted to be as far away from here as possible, he dispelled the clones taking a minute to adjust to the memory headache and made his way out of the clan undetected. He left the compound with a huge smile and a large amount of memorized jutsu to master. Next day when Naruto woke up the following morning he did his normal routine of getting dressed and eating a healthy breakfast. When he reached the academy he hid inside an alley and made a shadow clone and it left to attend the academy. Naruto hated going to the academy because the academy instructors hated him, he was actually a brilliant student but he suspected they sabotaged his grades and it caused him to hold the dead last position for the last two years. 
since they decided to do that he decided to train instead go to the academy. He started to make his way toward training ground 44 or the, the forest of death, where he usually trained. Once there he opened the scrolls that contained the jutsus that he stole from the Uchiha clan the previous day. The first scroll had the kanji for, earth. The second had the kanji for, water. And the third had the kanji for, wind. And the last had the kanji for, fire. The reason he had four affinities is because of the genetic modification Karama had given him. He had an affinity to water and earth because of his Mokotan bloodline, he also had a fire affinity because of his Sharingan bloodline, and his wind affinity came from his original affinity had Karama not changed his DNA. He created 300 clones and had them split into groups of 50. The first 50 would strengthen their earth affinity by using a leaf and pouring it into a leaf until it crumbled into dirt. The second 50 would strengthen their water affinity by pouring water chakra into a leaf until it was completely soaked. The third group of 50 would strengthen their wind affinity by cutting a leaf in half using wind chakra. The fourth group of would strengthen their fire affinity by burning a leaf using fire chakra. The last 100 would do the tree climbing exercise to improve his chakra control. As he left the clones to their training he started doing his physical exercises and his kenjutsu and taijutsu katas. Halfway through the training he sensed a chakra signature, he ignored it thinking it was one of the forest's many inhabitants. He wished he didn't because the next second he found himself wrapped up by snakes. He could easily escape but he wanted to know who was stupid enough to attack him. Relax kit. Whoever it is I don't sense any malicious intent in them, assured Karama. Naruto calmed down, but once again tensed up when he felt someone press themselves against his back and hold a kanai to his cheek. Well. What do we have here a little boy alone in this big bad forest? Tell me what brings you here little boy? Said a mysterious voice. Naruto looked back and saw light brown, pupil-less eyes, and black hair which has a blue tint to it which was styled in a short, spiky, fan ponytail. She was wearing a tan overcoat with a purple inseam, and complete with a fitted mesh bodysuit that stretches from her neck down to her thighs. She wears a dark orange mini skirt, as well as a forehead protector a small pendant that looks like a snake fang on a thick cord. I was training before you rudely interrupted me, Naruto responded emotionlessly. The woman only smirked, well aren't you the brave one, but a little boy like you shouldn't be training in this forest. Where I train is none of you concern, now would you please get the hell off me before I get angry, responded Naruto starting to get angry. Well I'll tell you one thing kid, you got balls. Besides I'm the sexy and single Midarashi Anko. What's you name kid? Asked Anko as she retracted his snakes and got off Naruto. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, now if you'll excuse me I have to get back to training, said Naruto as he left to find a new training spot. Unfortunately Anko had other plans and started following him and watched him as he trained. After a while Naruto was getting annoyed that he wasn't getting any privacy. He knew if he didn't lose her he wouldn't be able to train seriously, but then he thought she might be good for something. Anko san, would you like to have a spar? asked Naruto. Anko looked at the kid, she really didn't know what he was thinking he could take her on, but then she accepted thinking it would be over in 10 seconds. How wrong she was. Sure, Gaki, I'll spar with you. I'll make sure I don't hurt you to bad, Anko said with a smirk. Naruto got a tick mark on his head. He hated being called a brat and hated being underestimated, but he knew that if she underestimated him, he could beat her. Naruto got into his stance and Anko into hers. Naruto decided to start off by using his speed and send a roundhouse kick toward her head. Fast, was all Anko thought as she ducked under the kick and sent an uppercut toward Naruto's head, which he dodged by leaning his head back. He then sent a flurry of punched which Anko had a hard time dodging because they were too fast. Anko jumped back to put some distance between them. Not bad Gaki, but not enough to beat me, said Anko but on the inside she was thinking how he was so fast. Naruto didn't say anything as he used his superior speed to once again get in front of her and punch her in the stomach, she dodged and fought back but Naruto was able to easily dodge them using his speed. He then saw she had an opening and took advantage of it by hitting her with a chakra infused punch and sending her flying toward the tree. Anko couldn't believe it a little Gaki beat her, she thought how strong he was he looked to only be 8 years old and he beat her. As she looked up she saw Naruto offering her a hand up, she took it even though the only thing hurt was her pride. That was a helpful spar Anko-san, thank you, Naruto said with a small smile. Anko just smirked, you got lucky Gaki, that won't happen the next time we spar. 
I hope not or else you wouldn't be a very good sparring partner, responded Naruto with his own smirk. As he helped Anko he sensed that the clone from the academy had dispelled. It's been fun Anko-san but I have to get going, I'll see you tomorrow. Later Gaki, see you tomorrow, said Anko with a smile. Once he got far away enough, he created a clone and dispelled it to relay orders to the others and told them to dispel ten at each five minute interval. He left the forest with a small smile thinking he had made a friend, he only hoped she didn't get in his way when he got his revenge on the village. Four years later Naruto sat on his bed as he crossed off the final jutsu he had mastered, over the last four years he had mastered every jutsu he stole from the Uchiha clan archives the night of the massacre. He looked at the six scrolls on his bed with a feeling of accomplishment as he read each. The scrolls had the kanji wind, fire, earth, water, mokaton, and genjutsu. Wind jutsu. Wind release stream, futon. Kamikaze, wind style, divine wind, futon. Rankudan, wind style, drilling air bullet, futon. Daitopa, wind style, great breakthrough, futon. Atsugai, wind style, pressure damage, sarashu fu, wind slash. Fire jutsu. Kaden. Heizeki show, fire style, burning ash, Kaden. Ryuka no jutsu, fire style, dragon flame jutsu, Kaden. Karyudan, fire style, fire dragon bullet, Kaden. Goryuka no jutsu, fire style. Fire Dragon Jutsu, Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu, Fire Style. Fireball Jutsu, Kaden. Hosenka no Jutsu, Fire Style. Phoenix Flower Jutsu, Kaden. Cage Bunshin, Fire Style. Shadow Clone. Earth Jutsu. Doden. Cage Bunshin, Earth Style. Shadow Clone, Earth Release. Destructive Rising Rock Pillars, Doden. Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Earth Style. Double Suicide Decapitation Technique, Doden. Dosakiryu, Earth Style, Earth Dragon, Doden. Doryudan, Earth Style, Earth Dragon Bullet, Doden. Doryukatsu, Earth Style, Earth Flow Divide, Doden. Doryu Taiga, Earth Style, Great Mud River, Doden. Doryuheki, Earth Style, Mud Wall, Doden. Doryuso, Earth Style, Earth Flow Spears. Water Jutsu. Mizu Bunshin no Jutsu, Water Clone Jutsu, Swiro no Jutsu. Water Prison Jutsu, Sweden. Bakusu Shoha, Water Style. Exploding Water Shockwave, Sweden. Daibakufu no Jutsu, Water Style. Giant Vortex Jutsu, Sweden. Tepodama, Water Style. Gunshot, Sweden. Mizurapa, Water Style. Wild Water Wave, Sweden. Swiryudan no Jutsu, Water Style. Water Dragon Jutsu. Mokatan Jutsu. Moku Bunshin no Jutsu, Wood Style. Wood Clone Jutsu. Mokatan Hajutsu, Jukai Koten, Wood Style Secret Technique, Nativity of a World of Trees, Mokatan, Shichuka no Jutsu, Wood Style, Four Pillar House Jutsu, Mokatan, Mokajoheki, Wood Style, Domed Wall Jutsu, Hokage Shiki Jijun Jutsu, Kakuan Niten Suishu, Hokage Style 60 Year Old Technique, Enclosed Hermitage Entering Society with Bliss Bringing Hands, Mokatan, Mokashoku, Wood Style, Wooden Tentacles. Genjutsu. Kokuangyo no Jutsu, Infinite Darkness Jutsu, Megan. Jigoku Koka no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion. Descending Hell Jutsu, Megan. Niju Kakoni Erizu no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion. Double Fall Surroundings Jutsu, Megan. Kakoni Erizu no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion. False Surroundings Jutsu, Megan. Narakumi no Jutsu, Demonic Illusion. Hell Viewing Jutsu, Megan. Jubaku Satsu, Demonic Illusion, Tree Binding Death. Naruto started thinking to what had happened the past four years. In the academy, he was still the dead last, not for lack of trying, but because of the instructor's blind hatred. Tomorrow was the final exam, all he had to do was pass, and he would be a genin and not have to deal with them anymore. His thoughts then shifted to Anko over the last four years, they had been using the Forest of Death as their training ground and sparring, they had both helped each other become stronger. He really thought of Anko as his best friend. Then there was the council, over the past four years the council had begun to become suspicious of him because he stayed under the radar. Recently he had noticed it was more difficult to lose his Anbu overseers and he had to be more careful where he picked for training. He was happy to say that he was at least low Jonin level currently, and high Jonin level when using Kurama's chakra. He was knocked out of his thoughts by Kurama. 
Kit stop daydreaming it's time for you to take that test, said Kurama. Naruto only nodded and put his hands in a ram seal and left in a swirl of leaves. Shunshin. He arrived in an alley near the academy and made his way inside. He entered the room and saw everyone was silent at his arrival. He had used the past four years to instill fear in all of them, and he was successful as no one messed with him. He looked down the row and saw Sasuke brooding and looking out the window. Ever since his clan was killed by who he later found out was Sasuke's older brother, Itachi, he has been silent and dark which in turn made him gain more fangirls. Naruto shivered at the word fangirls. He absolutely hated them they were a disgrace in the ninja world. He had to guess that Konoha had the biggest fangirl population. Speaking of fangirls, Naruto watched as Sasuke's two biggest entered the class seemingly racing through the door. Ha take that Eno pig, I win again screeched the pink-haired fangirl named Sakura. In your dream's forehead, I had my foot in the door, a girl named Ino said back. Both kept arguing back and forth until they saw that their Sasuke-kun was sitting alone. They both raced to claim the chair on the right. Unfortunately or fortunately Kiba sat down next to Sasuke before they could reach. Kiba Baka get out of that chair so I can sit next to Sasuke-kun, screeched Sakura for everyone to hear. Kiba didn't like that he was being ordered out of his chair by some fangirl. His canine-like brain told him that they should be demanding Sasuke leave his chair so both could sit on either side of him. He wanted to be the alpha dog in the class, but saw that Sasuke was the obstacle in front of him. What does Kiba do? Kiba jumped on the desk and glared at Sasuke. Both were locked in a staring contest until someone behind Kiba accidentally bumped him and he fell forward. The class was in slow motion as Kiba's lips fell on Sasuke's. Both stayed in that position for two seconds before both jumped away and tried to get the taste of each other out of their mouth. As Kiba spit out the taste of Sasuke, Naruto felt the key radiating off all the girls in class toward Kiba. Apparently they were not pleased that their Sasuke-kun's first kiss was stolen by Kiba. They all pounced on Kiba and beat the crap out of him leaving him in a broken heap. Naruto's sweat dropped when he picked a scent of pheromones on Kiba. Apparently he was turned on when the girls all beat him sick. How weirder can you get? Thought Naruto. You'd be surprised Kit, I've seen it all. With that said Kurama started sending Naruto images of seriously messed up things he'd witnessed over the years. By the end Naruto was questioning his sanity. Everything was quiet when Aruka entered the class along with Mizuki. Okay class today is the day you will take your final exam. If you pass you will be given your Hite 8 and be official genin of Konoha. The first part of the exam was a written test which Naruto easily passed. The second part was a throwing weapons test, Naruto made sure to not score too high and avoid suspicion. The final test was being able to perform the three basic academy jutsu, which Naruto aced to the dislike of Iruka and Mizuki. As he made his way out of the academy, his advanced hearing picked up what sounded like Mizuki. As he got closer he used the chameleon jutsu to avoid detection. It looked like Mizuki was talking to a girl named Amy that failed the exam. You know Amy if you really want to pass, I can give you some extra credit, said Mizuki. Really Mizuki sensei? Amy said barely able to contain her excitement. Sure all you have to do is pass a test that focuses on you infiltration and information gathering skills, you will need to sneak into the Hokage tower then steal the scroll of ceiling and bring it to me and I will give you your Hite 8, Mizuki said with an all too sweet smile. All right, Mizuki sensei, I won't let you down. Amy left to begin her task. Kurama decided to make his presence known. Kit, you know what this means, right? Yeah, if I can steal that scroll from Mizuki, I can have all those jutsu added to my arsenal. The question is, how do I do it? asked Naruto to himself. You should tail Mizuki after he leaves with the scroll. Once he is far away enough from the village, you can kill him, memorize the scroll, and destroy the evidence, suggested Kurama. Naruto thought about the plan and decided it was the best course of action. He knew that Mizuki would probably not let Amy live once he got the scroll, but he didn't care what happened to anyone in this Kami forsaken village. Later that night currently Naruto was tailing Amy as she carried Konoha's forbidden scroll of sealing. Naruto had to make sure he stayed far away enough that he wasn't seen by the Hokage's crystal ball. Kit there is someone following the girl, warned Kurama. Naruto nodded and made a seal less clone to continue following Amy and he stayed behind to delay whoever was following Amy. After a few minutes he saw of all people it was Uruka. He must be trying to catch Amy, too bad I can't let that happen, 
said Naruto as he started a sequence of hand seals. Naruto activated his Sharingan as he finished the seals and said Mokaton, Mokashoku, wood style, wooden tentacles, wooden tentacles wrapped around Uruka holding him down, before he could shout out for help, Naruto jumped down from the tree and looked him in the eyes, placing him in a genjutsu and falling asleep. Nice job kit you should probably catch up to that girl. Naruto made his way toward where the clone was, he arrived just in time to see Mizuki throw a giant shuriken and kill Amy. Naruto didn't really care that she was dead all he cared about was getting that scroll. Mizuki jumped down from the tree and took the scroll making his way north of Konoha with Naruto silently following. Three hours later Mizuki and the tailing Naruto were currently crossing the border of fire country and rice country. As soon as Mizuki crossed the border, Naruto jumped in front of him. Well what do we have here, a traitor Chunin, and you have Konoha's forbidden scroll of sealing. What joy, said Naruto with a bloodthirsty smile. Mizuki was shocked that Naruto was here, he had expected Anbu, but not Naruto. After his shock he addressed Naruto. What are you doing here demon? yelled Mizuki angrily. What am I doing here? Why I'm here to take that scroll from you, of course, answered Naruto. Mizuki laughed, you think you can defeat me, you just a little genin. Naruto gave him another bloodthirsty smile, oh really, I think you're wrong. Now hand over the scroll and I might give you a painless death. Don't think you're better than me demon. When I give this scroll to Orochimaru Sama he will reward me with power and money. Do you want to know why the village hates you? Mizuki said with an evil grin. Naruto looked uninterested, no, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. Not put off by his non-interest, it's because twelve years ago when the nine-tailed fox was defeated the Yandaimi didn't kill it, he sealed it inside you. You're the nine-tailed fox. Naruto just grinned, I know and it's only fitting you die while I use his power. Mizuki was shocked by Naruto's response. What shocked him more was the intense evil he felt as Naruto drew on Kurama's chakra and saw how his whisker marks darkened, his hands turned into claws, his eyes became slits, his fangs lengthened, and a red chakra cloak in the shape of a fox with one tail swishing behind it developed. Mizuki was beyond scared he was cowering in fear as he witnessed Naruto's transformation. Are you scared Mizuki Teme? I want this to be the last thing you see before I send you to hell. Now die, screamed demonic Naruto. Naruto lunged at Mizuki who was knocked out of his fear paralysis, and managed to dodge. Mizuki started running deeper into rice country, but didn't get far as he was grabbed by a red chakra hand that burst from the ground. He felt unimaginable pain as the chakra burned off his skin and threw him into a tree. He looked up from the tree and saw Naruto still in his demon cloak with a bloodthirsty smile on his face. Get away from me demon! yelled Mizuki in fear. Do you really think I'm going to do that Mizuki Teme? chuckled Naruto darkly. Before Mizuki could respond Naruto once again sent a charka hand to grab him and rip the scroll from his back. Once he had the scroll, he threw Mizuki into the sky and did a couple of quick hand signs. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu, fire style, fireball jutsu, thought Naruto as he sent a large fireball at Mizuki that burned him to a crisp because he couldn't dodge. He opened the scroll and activated his Sharingan to memorize all the information. He was disappointed to see that most of the jutsu in the scroll, he already knew from the Uchiha clan archives, then four particular jutsus caught his attention. Rasengan, a rank jutsu, personally created by the Yandaimi Hokage, Hiraishin no jutsu, S rank, created by Yandaimi, Clone Great Explosion, a rank, created by Uchiha Itachi, Kuchiyose, Edo Tensai, S rank Kinjutsu, and created by the Naidame Hokage. These jutsu are all A and S rank. Although the Edo Tensai and the Hiraishin will be difficult to master without extensive Fuenjutsu knowledge, I can start learning the other when I get back to Konoha. After using a quick fire jutsu to destroy the scroll, he made his way back to Konoha to receive his team assignment. As he made his way back to Konoha he couldn't help but think how he would one day get his revenge and destroy Konoha. Serutobi Hirazan was having a bad day. Having to deal with paperwork and a paranoid council who were suspicious of Naruto because he hadn't been causing problems. Naruto was something else that Serutobi was worried about. Ever since Naruto was attacked and went missing for three days, he had turned quiet and uncaring. Serutobi also noticed that he no longer visited him or talked about being Hokage. The Sandame wondered if Naruto hated the village, he crushed that thought. Naruto would always love the village. 
That's what he kept telling himself despite the truth being far from his hope. Another thing that bothered him was that Mizuki had stolen the forbidden scroll of sealing and had escaped the land of fire. He only hoped that the scroll didn't fall into the wrong hands. How wrong he was. Academy Naruto reached the academy just in time. He was beyond tired he had spent the entire night coming traveling back to the village in order to be here for team assignments. As Aruka entered the class he could see that he was none the wiser. He made sure that when he placed Aruka under the genjutsu that he forgot everything that had happened. The only way he would be able to remember would be to have a Yamanaka unlock the memory, but he doubted Aruka would let that happen. Alright class 1 I'm happy to say that everyone here passed and I'm proud to say that we are no longer teacher and student but comrades in arms, Aruka smiled but frowned when he saw Naruto. Comrade in arms, yeah right. Naruto scoffed. Alright I will now start announcing teams, announced Aruka. Team 1 will be made up of. Naruto started ignoring Aruka since he didn't care. He looked around the room to see who had graduated. Nara Shikamaru, heir to the Nara clan and major slacker. Akamichi Choji, heir to the Akamichi clan and Shikamaru's best friend. Inazuka Kiba, heir to the Inazuka and a loud mouth. Hayuga Hanada, heiress to the Hayuga clan and a total coward. How she will be a clan head is beyond me, thought Naruto as he continued surveying the class. Yamanaka Ino, heiress to the Yamanaka clan, Sasuke self-proclaimed, love, and second in command of the Sasuke fan club. Aburame Shino, heir to the Aburame clan and a very isolated person much like himself. Haruno Sakura, a nameless civilian playing ninja, one of the most annoying person in class next to Kiba, and whose mother has a position on the council. Speaking of Sakura's mother, I have to make sure I have my revenge on her before I leave this Kami forsaken village once and for all. Last but no least the class emo and possible homosexual, Uchiha Sasuke. As much as he and Kurama hated the Uchiha, Naruto could make use of him if he could find something to use against him. He would have to sneak into the Hokage Tower and look for information. There were other students but most were no-name orphans with any clan or power. Team 7 will be made up of Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke. Sakura jumped from her chair cheering, and Uzumaki Naruto your Janin sensei will be Hitaki Kakashi. Sakura sat down in disappointment. Naruto was slightly smiling. With the Uchiha on his team he would be able to find ways to manipulate him. Team 8 will be made up of Inazuka Kiba, Hayuga Hanada, and Aburame Shino your Janin sensei will be Yuhi Kurenai. Team 9 is still in circulation so Team 10 will be made up of Narashikamaru, Yamanaka Ino, and Akamichi Choji your Janin sensei will be Serutobi Asuma. Once Aruka finished he told them they could leave for lunch. Naruto decided to go to the Hokage Tower and look up that information since he knew security would be light due to the all-day monthly meeting. Hokage Tower Naruto entered the archive room and created shadow clones to start searching through the filing cabinets. After a half hour of searching he decided to search in the Hokage's office instead. He entered and started the something, after five minutes of searching he found a cabinet, but it was locked with a seal on it. He channeled enough of Kurama's chakra to break the seal but not enough to be detected by the Anbu guards. Inside he found two files that made his eyes widen to the size of dinner plates. The first was an secret Anbu mission file, inside was a mission accept by Uchiha Itachi. The objective, exterminate the Uchiha clan for planning a coup against the Hokage. At the bottom of the page was the signature of the Sandame Hokage and his three advisors, Maitokado Homura, Yutatane Kaharu, and Shimura Danzo. He knew with this he could easily manipulate Sasuke to destroy Konoha. In a megacure, hidden rain, a masked stranger sneezed as he thought of ways to manipulate Uchiha Sasuke to do his bidding. The second file Naruto read was the most surprising. It was a top secret file on his heritage. Inside the file it named his mother and father. His mother was Uzumaki Kashina, heiress of the Uzumaki clan and last known Uzumaki. His father was Namikaze Minato. Yandaimi Hokage and clan head of Konoha's richest clan. What shocked him more was his inheritance, the money from the Namikaze clan holdings and businesses combined with the Uzumaki clan holdings, he was funding over 50% of Konoha. Naruto was furious. No he was beyond furious he was livid. How dare they keep his inheritance from him and have him living in a shithole of an apartment. He then realized something, if he took his money from Konoha's banks he would send Konoha into an economic depression. He smirked as he now had leverage to hold against the council and Konoha as a whole. He then turned to Kurama who was quiet the entire time. 
Did you know about my heritage? asked Naruto. No I had no idea, Kurama lied through his teeth, he knew if he said yes Naruto would turn his fury on him. You should start making your way back to the academy it's almost been an hour, suggested Kurama. Naruto nodded and made his way out of the tower undetected and headed toward the academy. A range of emotions were going through Naruto's mind, anger, betrayal, relief, and satisfaction. Academy as Naruto waited for his Jonin sensei with the other students, he couldn't help but think what the next step would be. Just then Kurama made a suggestion. I have an idea kit, since sooner or later you're going to leave this village and all that money could come in handy. I suggest you confront the old monkey and tell his you know about you parents and inheritance. You should demand your inheritance. He will probably call a council meeting and when they refuse you can threaten them with going to the fire daimyo who will probably be in your favor. Either way you get your money and Konoha gets screwed. You know Kurama that's a genius plan, I could kiss you, thought Naruto excitingly. Kurama sweat dropped. I think I'll pass as Naruto came out of his thoughts he saw that the only ones still in the class were him and his team. He was wondering where his Jonin sensei could be. With Kakashi as Kakashi looked at the memorial stone, he couldn't help but feel annoyed and happy at the same time. He was happy because he would have his sensei's legacy, Naruto, on his team. He was annoyed because yesterday the council had demanded he teach the last Uchiha, their logic being he would be able to apprentice Sasuke and teach him all his techniques. Another reason he was annoyed is that the pink-haired council member Haruno Suki had additionally demanded he make sure Sakura wasn't pushed too hard. It seemed the only good thing he got out of this team was the chance to train Naruto. He looked at his watch and decided now was a good time to meet his team, he disappeared in a swirl of leaves to the academy. Academy the classroom door opened to show a man who had silver spiky hair and had a mask covering his face. He only stuck his head in the door before telling them to meet him on the roof and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto didn't bother standing as he disappeared in a swirl of leaves, stunning Sakura and Sasuke. Roof Kakashi was leaning against the railing of the roof when Naruto appeared in a swirl of leaves and sat on the stairs. He knows the shunshin. I wondered where he learned it. The academy profile said he was the dead last who barely passes the final exam, thought Kakashi impressed with Naruto's ability. A few minutes later they were joined by Sakura and Sasuke who sat on the stairs as well. Kakashi was the first to speak. Well my first impression of you guys is I hate you, said Kakashi. Sakura and Sasuke frowned, Naruto remained emotionless. Why don't we start by saying our names, likes, dislikes, hobbies, and dreams? Why don't you start sensei? Said Sakura, all right my name is Hitaki Kakashi, my like, you don't need to know that, my dislikes, that either, my hobbies, you're too young to know about it and my dream, I don't have one. Okay you pinky you're next, said Kakashi. Sakura was annoyed at her nickname but obeyed, my name is Haruno Sakura, my like are, she looked at Sasuke and blushed, my dislikes are Eno Pig and, she looked at Naruto and gulped in fear. My hobbies are, she looked at Sasuke and giggled, and my dream is, she once again looked at Sasuke and blushed red and giggled. Great a fangirl, thought Kakashi with a mental sigh. Okay broody you're next. Sasuke scowled at Kakashi but nevertheless complied, my name is Uchiha Sasuke, I don't have a lot of likes, and I have a lot of dislikes, I don't have any hobbies, and I don't have a dream. More of an ambition to kill a certain man and revive my clan. Great a broody avenger, thought Kakashi as he turned to Naruto, your turn blondie. Naruto kept his emotionless mask and responded, my name is Uzumaki Naruto and that's all you need to know. Everyone especially Kakashi frowned, since when did he become so cold and distant? Okay then know that we know absolutely nothing about one another. I should tell you to meet me at training ground 7 for the genin exam, and a word of advice don't eat breakfast you'll just throw it up. With that said Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke before they could ask any questions. They all went their separate ways. Sasuke went to go train as Sakura hounded him for a date, and Naruto left to go confront the Hokage. Hokage Tower Serutobi was having a good day, he was sitting back and enjoying his little red book because he had finished his paperwork. He didn't know that what was approaching his office would give him a lot more paperwork. Naruto approached the Hokage's tower and entered completely ignoring the secretary screaming for him to come back and reach the office before the Anbu could stop him. He kicked open the door and entered the room. Serutobi was shocked and he quickly put the book away before anyone could see, 
Serutobi also noticed the scowl on Naruto's face instead of the usual smile he used to have. Hokage-sama I have something very important to talk to you about, said Naruto barely hiding his anger. Just then the Anbu entered the room but were stopped by the Sandame who told them to leave them. The Anbu exited the room and closed the door behind them, he then turned to Naruto with a serious face. What is it you want to talk about Naruto? said the Sandame without his usual grandfatherly tone. I would like to discuss the reason you thought that hiding my heritage from me, finally losing his cool and giving in to his anger. Serutobi was shocked to say the least, he immediately turned on some privacy seals and turned to Naruto with some shame in his eyes. Do you know who your parents are Naruto? asked the aging leader. Yes I do. My mother was a kunoichi named Uzumaki Kashina and was also the last of the known Uzumaki clan. Naruto walked to the window and looked at the Hokage monument, and my father was none other than Minato Namikaze, Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha. Now Serutobi was shocked and was trying to think how it was that Naruto found out, the only ones that knew his heritage were Kakashi and Jiraiya. He wanted to be sure which one it was, before he took any further action. Tell me who told you this Naruto? The only person who seemed to care about me. Serutobi thought he was talking about Kakashi before Naruto continued. He has been with me my entire life and has been the only one there for me when I was alone. Serutobi was confused as to who Naruto was talking about. Naruto saw his confusion and decided to explain further. His name is Kurama or as you would better know him Kayubi, Naruto said calmly with no emotion. Serutobi dropped his pipe when he mentioned Kayubi thinking that the fox was influencing Naruto. Naruto you cannot trust the fox he will only use you and discard of you when you are of no use to him, Serutobi said with a sort of pleading to get his point across, the fox is evil and you must never trust it. Naruto got angry, Kurama has been there for me more times than I can count, he was there for me when the villagers attacked me, he was there for me when I was lonely, and he was there for me more times than you were Hokage-sama. Serutobi had the decency to look ashamed before he looked up and addressed Naruto. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you Naruto, I have made a lot of mistakes in my life and I have regretted a lot of them, Serutobi said in an apologizing manner. Well now you can at least fix one of them by giving me what is rightfully mine, I want my inheritance and my family's estate. Naruto I can give you the estate but the inheritance is something I cannot give you, I'm sorry. Naruto lost his patience, I don't care, I want what is mine and I will get it Serutobi. Call a council meeting because we had a chance to be civil and now you have forced my hand. Serutobi looked at Naruto's cold emotionless blue eyes to see how serious he was. He sighed the council will be in an uproar when they heard about this. Very well Naruto follow me. Serutobi lead Naruto out of the office and into a large chamber where he informed an Anbu to summon the council. Konoha Council Room. One hour later as the council gathered inside the room many wondered why they were called in the civilian side wondered why the demon was inside the room as well. Finally one of the elders, Yutatane Kaharu, decided to end the silence, Hokage-sama why have we been called here? Serutobi took a drag of his pipe and spoke, I'm afraid I did not call this meeting Kaharu, but young Naruto did, pointing a Naruto next to him who stood looking at the council with cold, blue eyes. One of the civilian council members decided to speak next, what could the dem, boy want that it would require a council meeting? Naruto was the next to speak up, I called this meeting because I want what is mine unfortunately Hokage-sama has refused to give it to me. Danzo was the next to speak up, what is it that you have requested boy? Naruto turned his eyes in Danzo and spoke, I want my inheritance, my birthright, the money in the Namikaze and Uzumaki clan holdings. The civilian side broke into loud protest denying that Naruto was the heir to the Namikaze clan and refusing to give him what was his. Nara Shikaku spoke next, Hokage-sama is it true that Naruto is the heir to both clans holdings? Serutobi took a long drag from his pipe before speaking. Yes it is true Naruto is the son of Uzumaki Kashina and Namikaze Minato, I can give you my word that it is true as I was the one of three that knew Naruto's true heritage. The entire room was shocked the civilian side more than the shinobi side, finally a pink-haired council member decided to make herself known, that's impossible Yandaimi-sama never had any children and this boy is certainly not his son. Serutobi looked at the woman with narrowed eyes, are you saying my word is not good enough civilian? Serutobi said with emphasis on civilian. The woman gulped and decided to sit down. Shikaku decided to speak again, 
Even if you are entitled to you inheritance, it makes up for 50% of Konoha's economy and we would be sent into a depression if we just handed over that money to you. Naruto looked at Shikaku with narrowed eyes, so are you saying you won't be giving me what is rightfully mine? One of the civilians replied smugly, that's right what are you going to do now? Naruto just gave a small chuckle that confused everyone, the chuckle then turned into fun blown laughter. Ha 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 good then that means I can do this, said Naruto with a sadistic grin. He started doing hand seals, which caused everyone to tense only to see his slam his hand on the ground and reveal a small fox. Hello Hideki I assume you have the response from the fire daimyo? asked Naruto. The fox named Hideki nodded, of course Naruto-sama, he had given me this for you to present to the council. The fox handed Naruto before saying farewell and dispelling. Everyone was shocked to say the least, the shinobi side because they had never seen a fox summons and the civilian side because they heard that Naruto had received a letter from the fire daimyo. Naruto read the scroll before smiling and handing it to Serutobi, who paled upon reading it. Finally losing patience a civilian merchant spoke up, what does it say Hokage-sama? Serutobi sighed, this document states that Uzumaki Naruto is to be given his full inheritance and is to be paid restitutions for his past attacks. If these are not met the daimyo will pull his funding from Konoha until they are. It even contains the official seal and signature of the fire daimyo. Everyone paled not only had Naruto managed to win his inheritance, he now had leverage over the village should they not pay in full. The civilian side erupted in protest refusing to pay while the shinobi side sighed in defeat as they couldn't deny an order from the daimyo. Serutobi silenced the civilian side and turned to Naruto, very well Naruto you win come to my office and you can sign the paperwork. The civilians were about to argue but some quick key from Serutobi shut them up. The Sandame dismissed the council and lead Naruto to his office. Once inside the office Serutobi walked up to the picture of the Yandaimi and removed it revealing a safe. Serutobi opened it and took out three scrolls and a key. He handed them to Naruto before he sat down at his desk exhausted. Naruto looked at the scroll and the key then heard Serutobi speak. Those are the scrolls your father left you before he died. One is a letter from him, another is his two most famous jutsu, and the last is a sum of money. The key opens the Namikaze estate. Serutobi handed Naruto a map so he would know where it was. The amount of money that both the Uzumaki and Namikaze clan has invested in Konoha banks amounts to 700 million ryo. Konoha can pay you 500 million while the 200 million you will receive from percentages from completed missions. Naruto only nodded as he turned to leave but stopped when Serutobi spoke up, what happened to you Naruto? What happened to the boy that wanted to be Hokage and be acknowledged by the villagers? Naruto just looked at his with cold eyes and spoke, that Naruto died when the villagers tried to kill him, and now they will pay for their crimes. Without another word Naruto left in a swirl of leaves. Serutobi looked at the picture of Minato. I'm sorry Minato I failed you. Serutobi put his head down in shame before starting the paperwork. With Naruto Naruto reappeared in his apartment and started packing what little belongings he had. After packing he made his way to his new home. As he walked through the streets, he ignored the usual glares and whispers. Naruto only smirked at them as he walked into the upper districts of Konoha. He could sense that there were people following him, but he wanted them to see how he walked into their beloved Yandaimi's estate. He stood in front of the Namikaze estate and noticed the blood seal on the gate. He cut his thumb and smeared blood on the seal, he waited a few seconds before the gate opened and he entered the compound. He looked at the house in admiration, it was a two-story European style house, it had a large front yard, and the backyard looked like a large training ground. He used the key Serutobi had given him and opened the door. Inside the house he couldn't help but be impressed at all the expensive appliances and furniture. He made his way to the second floor, he found six doors. Three doors were master bedrooms, two doors was a very large bedroom, and the final room was a large library, study that contained very large amounts of scrolls and books. He took one of the books from a shelf and saw it was a book on advanced sealing techniques. With all these books I can probably become a seal master before I leave Konoha. These books will also help me complete the Hiraishin no Jutsu and the Edo Tensai so I can use them with no problem, thought Naruto. Before leaving the study to look at the basement he created 30 shadow clones. Okay here's what I want you to do. 10 will study advanced Fuenjutsu, 10 will research to complete the Hiraishin, and 10 will research to complete the Edo Tensai, 
with his orders given the clones left to do their work and Naruto continued to the basement. As he reached the basement he saw that there was a heavy metal door with a blood seal, he spread blood on the seal and watched as the seal glowed and opened revealing a large armory. He looked at the katanas and tantos hanging on the walls, he also saw crates on the other side of the room, kanai, shuriken, explosive tags, containers of soldier pills and blood pills, flash and smoke bombs, and Hiraishin three-pronged kanai. This room had enough weapons to supply a civil war, but Naruto didn't look a gift horse in the mouth since these supplies will be useful for the destruction of the leaf. Well it's getting late and I should probably get some sleep for tomorrow's test. Naruto went upstairs and randomly chose one of the bedrooms to sleep in, at least while he was still in the village. Next day training ground 7 Sakura and Sasuke waited at training ground 7 for their sensei and blonde teammate. Naruto showed up wearing his black anbu pants, red t-shirt, fingerless gloves with metal plates, dark blue sandals, and hid black and red camouflaged vest. He walked toward them eating an apple looking at them with an emotionless face. You're late. Screeched Sakura. Naruto ignored her as he sat down and took out a book on advanced sealing. Sakura saw that he was ignoring her, her violent temper got the better of her rational fear and she lunged at Naruto ready to punch him. Naruto saw this and dodged the punch, unsealed his sword, and put the sword at Sakura's throat. Naruto looked at Sakura with cold eyes ready to kill. What do you think you were trying to do Haruno? Sakura only gulped in fear as the realization of what she did set in. I'm sorry I won't do it again, she said in fear of losing her life. Naruto didn't bother to acknowledge her apology. He resealed his sword and returned to his book. Sasuke watched the situation with interest. How could the dead last be so skilled? Sasuke had to admit that Sakura was weak, but Naruto showed skill that wouldn't belong to the dead last. Two hours passed and there was a large puff of smoke, which revealed Kakashi holding a clock and two bentos, for those that don't know what a bento is it's basically a lunchbox. Yo! Greeted Kakashi with an eye smile. Sakura only screeched, you're late. While Sasuke looked at him annoyed and Naruto kept reading his book. Sorry I got lost on the road to life, he lied. Everyone even Naruto sweat dropped at his horrible excuse. He went over to the three wooden posts and placed the bentos and a clock on them. He then turned to address the genin and took out two bells. Okay children. Your objective to pass the test will be to take these bells from me, said Kakashi holding up two bells. But sensei there are only two bells and there are three of us, asked Sakura. Very good Sakura. The reason for that is that whoever doesn't have a bell will be sent back to the academy. Also if you can't get them before the timer runs out, you will be tied to a post while I eat lunch, at the mention of lunch two stomachs growled. Make sure you come after me with intent to kill or you won't get the bells. Kakashi readied the timer before yelling, go. Everyone hid and began planning their next move. It doesn't make sense he said only two of us will pass, but I have never heard of a three-man squad. Wait a minute. Of course I see the game you're playing Kakashi, thought Naruto with a grin as he figured out the true meaning of the test. Naruto began preparing accordingly and made some seal-less shadow clones to begin setting the trap. He grinned as he remembered that Kakashi said to come with the intent to kill. He would make him regret that. Naruto his up in a tree while he observed Kakashi reading an orange book, he used his senses to locate Sasuke and Sakura. He sensed that Sasuke was up a tree and Sakura was hiding in the bushes. After a clone came to him and told him the trap was ready, he continued watching Kakashi and saw that Sasuke had made his move. Sasuke ran toward Kakashi and started using Taijutsu. Kakashi was impressed with his Taijutsu and even put his book away to be able to deflect his punches and kicks. Sasuke sent a roundhouse kick at Kakashi's head, which he grabbed. Sasuke then twisted his body to punch Kakashi, but failed when Kakashi caught his fist. Sasuke used this chance to grab the bells since Kakashi had his hands full. The Jonin felt Sasuke touch the bells and immediately pushed him away. Sasuke landed on his feet and started a series of hand signs. Fire style. Fireball jutsu, Sasuke mentally yelled. What a genin doesn't have enough chakra to do that jutsu, thought Kakashi. When the fireball dispersed there was only a singed crater and no Kakashi before Sasuke could search for Kakashi he heard something under his feet. Earth style. Double suicide decapitation technique, a hand shot from the ground and grabbed Sasuke's foot, it dragged him down into the earth until nothing was left but a head. Kakashi appeared in front of Sasuke with an eye smile, not bad for a genin, 
your taijutsu could use a little work. Get me out of here! yelled Sasuke in anger. No I don't think so, Kakashi said with an eye smile and walked away. Kakashi hid in the trees as he looked down on Sakura, not sensing someone was watching him. She seemed to be frantically looking for Sasuke. Kakashi decided to cast a genjutsu on Sakura to see how she would react, the result was pathetic. Sakura was walking through the wood as she heard a rustle in the bushes and took out a kanai. W who's tea there? Sakura said in fear. Sasuke stumbled through the bushes. Sakura gave a sigh of relief until he saw the state he was in. Sasuke was covered on cuts and was bleeding profusely. Sakura help me, Sasuke pleaded weakly. Sakura could only let out a scream before she fainted. Kakashi looked at her unconscious body with a sweat drop. This is the kunoichi of the year. The academy standards have really gone down, whispered Kakashi. Kakashi was about to move on to Naruto until he heard a voice, wind style, drilling air bullet. A bullet of air caught him off guard and pushed him into the clearing. He recovered and ten Naruto clones surrounded him. Six clones engaged him in taijutsu. He had a difficult time dealing with Naruto's unknown type of taijutsu but his years of experience allowed him to stay one step ahead. After dispelling all the clones he noticed the four clones were finishing up hand signs. Fire style. Fire dragon jutsu, yelled all the clones simultaneously. Kakashi's eye widened when he saw four fire dragons coming from all sides, he quickly used a kawarimi, substitution, to replace himself with a log. Kakashi was immediately on guard hiding in the trees. On the other side of the clearing stood a wide-eyed Sakura and a jealous Sasuke. Amazing he used so many powerful jutsu, thought Sakura. How is the dobi so strong? I should be the one with that power, I need it to kill him, thought Sasuke angrily. I never knew Naruto was so strong, he nothing like the academy reports say, said Kakashi out loud. Thank you sensei. Kakashi heard a voice behind him. He quickly jumped away as a katana sliced through the branch he was standing on. Kakashi saw Naruto's emotionless face as they both landed in the clearing. Kakashi took out a kanai and stood in a defensive stance, while Naruto stood in an offensive stance with his katana. Both stood in the clearing. Naruto took the first move and swung his sword at Kakashi who dodged. Naruto twisted his body to try and behead Kakashi, who used the kanai to block. Both stood trying to overpower the other with their respective weapon. Not bad Naruto, you're very skilled, praised Kakashi. Naruto didn't give any emotion as he responded, thank you sensei, but I am still holding back. Naruto started channeling wind chakra through his katana to sharpen the blade, he sliced through Kakashi's kanai like a hot knife through butter. Kakashi jumped away but had gotten a shallow slice through his vest. Kakashi was impressed that Naruto put him on the defensive like this, although he couldn't go on the offensive Naruto was at least high chunin level. Before Naruto could continue the kenjutsu fight, the clock sounded indicating time was up. Alright time's up, and you didn't get the bells, Kakashi said with an eye smile. Sasuke and Sakura came out from the bushes both with different reactions to what they had witnessed. Sakura had a look of awe and fear, while Sasuke had a scowl on his face. Naruto kept his emotionless mask and didn't pay any attention to his teammates. Sasuke walked up to Naruto, where did you learn that jutsu? Teach me. Naruto ignored Sasuke and decided to speak up, actually sensei, I think you should double check your bells. Don't ignore me Dobi, yelled Sasuke, but noticed he was still being ignored. Sasuke be quiet it's Naruto's jutsu, if he doesn't want to give it to you he doesn't have to, snapped Kakashi. Kakashi then followed Naruto's advice, he noticed that the bells were gone, he was shocked to say the least. When did he get the bells? thought Kakashi. Naruto then held up the bells he had taken from Kakashi. Good job Naruto, you have an extra bell who are you going to give it to? Naruto turned around to look at Sasuke and Sakura and remembered something Kurama had taught him. Look underneath the underneath, he threw them both bells before speaking. They can have both of them because they are my comrades and it wouldn't be a full team without them would it Kakashi sensei, Naruto lied because he had figured out the real purpose of the test but hated the idea of working with them. You all pass, proclaimed Kakashi with an eye smile. Looks like he figured out the true meaning of the test, thought Kakashi. That's right Naruto the true meaning of the test was for you guys to use teamwork to get the bells from me, but because Naruto gave them to you he showed that he was a team player. Remember those who disobey orders are trash, 
but those who abandon their friends are worse than trash. Sakura only sighed in relief that she would get to stay in, her Sasuke-kun's, team. Sasuke was angry because he had to accept pity from the Dobi. Another part of him was relieved that he was finally a genin and was one step closer to his goal. Kakashi dismissed his genin with orders to report here for their first mission then left in a poof of smoke. Sasuke left with the intention of training, while Sakura followed him like a lost puppy asking for a date. Naruto went back to his estate in a swirl of wind. With Naruto Naruto was in his personal training ground working on completing his training and mastering the Rasengan. Normally mastering the Rasengan would take months to master, but he also had the aid of 200 shadow clones doing the same training. He estimated that he would master it by later tonight. When Naruto had gotten home he had been given a report on the status of completing the research for the Hiraishin in the Edo Tensai. His clones estimated that the work would be finished in five months. So far his clones had discovered that both jutsus were a type of summoning. The Hiraishin used the seal formula on the Hiraishin Kanai as a summoning point where the user only needs to use a small amount of chakra to reverse summon themselves to the Kanai. The Edo Tensai was a more complex jutsu, it summoned souls from the afterlife and placed them in a new body. The user would have to make a sacrifice a live person for the body to be used a vessel for the soul. These bodies would be indestructible and regenerate themselves. The only way to stop the bodies would be by sealing them. A problem with the jutsu was the control over the soul the user would have. In order to control the soul the user would have to be stronger than the summoned or the soul could turn against the summoner. He didn't have to worry though. Using his DNA that contained both the Sharingan and Mokotan genes, he could easily control and summon souls. All Naruto needed now was to start grave robbing. He would have to be careful though. Either way both jutsu once complete would be a very powerful addition to his arsenal. He left the compound to get dinner and left his clones to their assignments. He walked toward Ichiraku Ramen ignoring the usual glares. He stepped inside the stand and couldn't help but smile. He loved coming to the small ramen stand because it was the only place he could go as a kid and not get kicked out. He hoped when he destroyed Konoha they didn't die with the rest of the damn village. Welcome to Ichiraku Ramen, can I take your order? Asked a young teen waitress named Ayame. I'll have the usual Ayame Nichan, Naruto said with a smile. Ayame realized who was over the counter when she turned around, Oh Naruto-kun, it's good to see you. Where have you been? Naruto realized that it had been eight months since he had been here, occupied with his training and planning his revenge. You know me Ayame Nichan training to get stronger, Naruto responded with a sincere smile. Ayame went in the back to make his ramen and came back five minutes later. Naruto ate his ramen enjoying the taste and remembering the old times he had in the little stand. After twenty bowls of ramen he paid and thanked Ayame for the dinner. When he got home he went to bed wondering what the next day would bring. Two months later if Naruto didn't hate Konoha before he sure as hell hated it now, the past two months had been hell for Naruto and his squad. They would always do D-ranked missions and Naruto hated doing the menial tasks to improve teamwork, as Kakashi would say, except he never helped do the mission only giggling perversely at his book. Currently they had just returned from capturing the fire daimyo wife's cat Tora, and it had taken all of Naruto's willpower not to destroy the cat's mind with his Sharingan. Oh my little Tora Chan are you alright, mommy missed you. The fire daimyo's wife was currently crushing the cat between he cleavage. It gave Naruto a sense of pleasure watching it suffer. The Sandame Hokage was looking through D rank missions. Since your squad finished another D rank, now you have choice. You can walk some dogs, babysit, or. No Tora Chan come back, yelled the daimyo wife as Tora escaped again. Or you can capture Tora again finished Serutobi. Naruto started letting out an unholy amount of killing intent and everyone in the room was sweating and looking nervous. No if I have to chase that damn cat one more time I'm going to give it back in ashes, yelled Naruto in anger. Kakashi decided to play peacemaker, Hokage-sama I think team 7 is ready for a C rank mission. Yes I think that team 7 is more than ready for a C rank, agreed the Sandame. Tazuna-san please enter, said the Sandame. Team 7 turned to see a man who looked to be in his 50s holding a sake bottle and drunk. This is what I get for my money, a couple of brats and their sensei. You promised me ninja Hokage-sama, slurred Tazuna. I can assure you Tazuna-san these genin are more than capable of protecting you. Serutobi turned to address Team 7, Team 7 your mission is to escort Tazuna-san to his home in Nami no Kuni, 
land of waves, and protect him until he completes his bridge. Team 7 nodded in agreement and Kakashi told them to meet at the gate in two hours. Two hours later Naruto hid in the shadows watching the gate and waiting for his team and Kakashi. He watched as Tazuna fidgeted nervously. He checked his equipment one more time. He checked his four separate sealing tattoos. The storage seals held his Rizaburato, Hellraiser Blade, Kanai, Shuriken, and the final seal was a summoning tattoo for the foxes. He checked his vest pockets that held his storage scrolls filled with cloths, money, and medical supplies. He looked down the street and saw Sasuke was approaching the gate with Sakura in tow. Kakashi showed up five minutes later. Okay is everyone packed and ready to go? Asked Kakashi with an eye smile. He saw that Sakura and Sasuke had backpacks while Naruto wasn't wearing anything but his regular cloths. Naruto where are your things? Asked Kakashi. Naruto looked at Kakashi with an emotionless face and pulled out two scrolls from his pocket, in here sensei, pointing at the two scrolls. Kakashi only nodded his head, but Sasuke and Sakura had on faces of confusion. Naruto sighed as he saw their faces. You know people call you the best of the academy but you're a bunch of idiots. These are storage scrolls, they are a work of fuinjutsu that allow me to store things inside seals, explained Naruto. Sasuke and Sakura glared at Naruto for calling them idiots, although Kakashi seemed to agree with him knowing that the top of the academy should at least know what storage scrolls were. After the tension dropped Kakashi lead everyone through the gate and they made their way toward Nami no Kuni. Halfway to Nami no Kuni as Team 7 walked through the forest to Nami no Kuni, they passed a single puddle in the middle of the road. Naruto and Kakashi noticed that that wasn't a normal puddle, while everyone else was oblivious to it. As they walked past Kakashi slowed down to the back of the group. Suddenly, two shinobi with water-breathing masks and a chained gauntlet emerged from the puddle and wrapped their chain around Kakashi ripping him to pieces. One down, said the first shinobi, three to go, said the second. Kakashi sensei, yelled Sakura in shock, while Sasuke and Naruto sprang into action and ran toward the mysterious ninja. Naruto summoned his katana and channeled wind chakra making the blade sharper and sliced at the attacker's head, unfortunately his opponent tried to block the attack with his gauntlet and failed to notice the wind chakra covering the blade. The blade cut through the shinobi's gauntlet severing his hand, he screamed in pain as his hand leaked blood. Maizu! yelled other shinobi. The shinobi now identified as Maizu continued to scream in pain before he was silenced when Naruto beheaded him with a look of glee on his face. The older brother named Gozu looked in disbelief as his brother was killed in front of his eyes. He had forgotten all about Sasuke, in turn Sasuke used his distraction and wrapped him in ninja wire to incapacitate him. Kakashi jumped down from the tree and saw a beheaded Maizu, a gleeful Naruto, a smirking Sasuke, a tied up Gozu, and a terrified Sakura and Tazuna. Kakashi looked at his team, good job team, Naruto you didn't have to kill him. Naruto lost his smile and shrugged. We're shinobi, our job is to kill. Kakashi walked up to a crying Gozu and talked in a serious voice. Why did you attack us? Gozu looked up with tears of rage in his eyes. You, you bastards killed my brother I'll never tell you anything. Sensei I may be able to get him to talk, if I could get a few moments alone with him, suggested Naruto. Kakashi thought it was a bad idea since Naruto might kill him, but he would be a couple feet behind him in order to stop him in time. Fine Naruto but what are you going to do? asked Kakashi. Naruto smirked. Don't worry sensei by the end he'll be singing like a canary. Naruto dragged Gozu into the bushes and activated his Mangekyo Sharingan. Naruto muttered a single word, Sukuyomi. Sukuyomi world Gozu found himself in a red and black world tied to a cross. He was in so much pain, all of his body felt on fire. Naruto appeared in front of him holding his katana with a maniacal smile on his face. Welcome to my Sukuyomi a world where I am Kami. Here I can control space and time. We could spend weeks in here but only seconds would pass in the real world. Now tell me why did you attack us? You I'm not tell you anything, yelled Gozu in anger. Naruto only smirked as he got closer and stabbed him in the heart. He thought he died only to come back again in the same situation. Now now if you don't answer my question I'll be forced to keep torturing you until you do, said Naruto. Gozu refused again and Naruto kept torturing and killing Gozu, only for him to come back to the nightmare that was Sukuyomi. For Gozu it seemed like hours of intense pain and death, only to be resurrected. 
he finally cracked and told Naruto all about his orders from Momochi Zabuza and his employer Gato the shipping magnate and CEO of the Gato Corporation. He even informed Naruto about how Gato was squeezing the life out of Nami no Kuni and using bandits to terrorize the country. He told him how Gato hired Zabuza to kill the bridge builder so he couldn't finish the bridge. He finished by telling him that Zabuza and his apprentice Haku would probably got after them next now that he and his brother had failed. Naruto nodded and released him from the Sukuyomi appearing back in the forest. Real World Team 7 and Tazuna watched as Naruto looked at Gozu in the eyes and Gozu immediately screamed in terror and pain before falling unconscious. Naruto deactivated his Mangekio Sharingan and rubbed his eyes as Kurama's chakra repaired the damage the Mangekio Sharingan did to them. He couldn't believe the power of the Mangekio Sharingan, he could still remember the day Kurama had activated it. Flashback Naruto lay in bed as he slept off a day of training. He slept soundly before he screamed in pain as he felt his eyes were on fire. Kurama what the hell has happened? asked Naruto as the pain in his eyes subsided. Don't worry kid I was only upgrading your eyes to the next level, responded Kurama. The next level? But didn't you say the Mangekio Sharingan would cause me to go blind the more I use it unless I have a sibling with the same power to take their eyes? Yes I remember saying that until I realized that whatever damage the Mangekio Sharingan does to your eyes, I can heal with my chakra, responded Kurama with self-pride. Naruto was impressed he also had not thought Kurama could do that, he got up from bed and went to the mirror to look at his new eyes. He saw they were shaped like a combination of a four-point shuriken and a five-point star. He couldn't wait to start training to discover the new powers the Mangekio Sharingan would give him. End flashback Naruto was knocked out of his thoughts as Kakashi addresses him, Naruto what did you do to him? Don't worry sensei. I put him under a genjutsu and I have the information, replied Kakashi. How is that possible you only looked into his eyes for a few seconds before he fell unconscious? asked Sakura. Naruto looked at Sakura with an annoyed expression. I told you I used a genjutsu, now shut up so I can relay the information. Sakura only nodded fearfully. Naruto began explaining everything about Zabuza and Gado. The current situation in Nami no Kuni and the ninja assassins after Tizuna to prevent him from finishing his bridge. Kakashi stood in thought. This mission is easily in a rank mission now with Momochi Zabuza hunting you Tizuna san. Tizuna sank down to his knees with tears in his eyes. Please you have to complete the mission. If I die everyone will lose hope and Gato will win. My daughter and grandson will be devastated if I'm killed. Please don't leave. It's not my decision. It's the team's decision, Kakashi said pointing toward the genin. I think we should go back we're not prepared for this mission, said Sakura, hoping they could return to Konoha. I think we should continue it would be a good chance to test my skills, said Sasuke Aili. Naruto was deep in thought looking at the pros and cons of helping Tizuna, so far all he had were pros. If they continued the mission, he could recruit Zabuza and Haku to his side, perform a hostile takeover of Gato's corporation, establish a safe house in Nami no Kuni, and not have to chase after a damn cat. I think we should keep going we can't just abandon the old drunk here, said Naruto. Kakashi looked at his three genin, two were determined to complete the mission while one was too afraid of anything. He hoped Sakura would show her usefulness during the mission or else he would have to consider a replacement. Okay then let's continue the mission team 7 inches. Team 7 and Tazuna continued on their journey to Nami no Kuni. After taking a boat trip and arriving on the island, team 7 was currently making their way toward Tazuna's house. Walking up the road Naruto sensed something in the bushes and threw a kanai at it, only to reveal a white rabbit pierced through the head. Naruto Baka you killed an innocent rabbit, yelled Sakura. Naruto ignored her as he and Kakashi had the same thought, a white rabbit, but it's summer unless it's a domesticated rabbit. Substitution. Naruto then heard what sounded like a blade slicing through the air. Everyone get down, yelled Kakashi as he tackled Tizuna to the ground, the genin immediately obeyed. The large cleaver-like sword flew over their heads and embedded itself in a tree. A tall and noticeably muscular man with pale skin, short spiky black hair, wearing baggy pants with a striped pattern, and a mask landed on the sword's hilt. Sharingan no Kakashi, I never expected to face you, oh and you're in charge of a team of brats. Anyway all I want is the bridge builder, if you give him to me you and your brats can go free, said Zabuza. Kakashi was about to speak until Naruto interrupted him. Kakashi sensei I will fight Zabuza, you stay behind and protect the others. Naruto you can't be serious, 
He's an A-rank missing nin. You're no match for him, yelled Kakashi at Naruto's overconfidence. Naruto unsealed his katana. Kakashi sensei I think we went over this, when I fought with you I was holding back a lot. Naruto didn't wait for Kakashi's approval and ran forward towards Zabuza who retrieved his sword from the trunk of the tree. Naruto summoned his katana and both swordsmen meet in the middle of the clearing. Metal clanged as both swordsmen tried to overpower the other, Zabuza was surprised that Naruto could hold his own against him. Not bad Gaki, but you're not strong enough to beat one of the seven ninja swordsmen, stated Zabuza with a smirk. Naruto just gave his own smirk, you're wrong because I'm holding back. Naruto jumped back and formed a one-handed seal. His entire body glowed as he deactivated his gravity seals. Naruto disappeared in a blur. Zabuza looked around and only his years of experience prevented the blonde from using his speed to behead Zabuza. Hold still you damn gaki! yelled Zabuza in frustration as he defended from the blonde's quick slices. What's wrong Zabuza? It looks like and one can become one of the ninja swordsmen nowadays, taunted Naruto. Zabuza yelled in anger and charged at the blonde, he didn't see the kick that sent him into the nearby lake. Zabuza stood on the water with a murderous look in his eyes, Naruto just smirked and went to face Zabuza on the top of the water. With Team 7 and Tazuna watched the fight with wide eyes, they couldn't believe that Naruto a fresh genin was getting the better of an A rank missing nin and a member of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. Kakashi being an experienced ninja could tell that Naruto even though was showing great strength and skill was still holding back. Sasuke was seething seeing that Naruto had such skill and strength when he deserved it more in order to kill his brother. Tizuna and Sakura could only watch with awe at Naruto's skill. Zabuza and Naruto stood at a distance from each other both swords drawn, one with a scowl the other with a smirk. Zabuza sheathed his sword and started doing hand signs, Naruto did the same. Water style. Water dragon jutsu. Yelled the missing nin as a dragon made of water rose from the surface of the lake and headed toward Naruto. Naruto created a seal less shadow clone and both started performing hand signs. The blonde and his clone finished their seals before performing their respective jutsu. Fire style. Fire dragon jutsu. Yelled Naruto as he expelled a large dragon made of fire towards Zabuza. Wind style. Great breakthrough yelled the shadow clone and inhaled deeply before blowing out the chakra-infused wind. The wind and fire attacks both combined and formed a large white-hot fire dragon that overpowered the water dragon. The dragon made of fire continued towards Zabuza. Water style. Water wall jutsu, yelled Zabuza as he spewed out a wall of water that protected him from the fire dragon. After the water dragon was stopped, Zabuza made one hand seal and a thick chakra-infused fog rolled in. Kirigakir no jutsu, Zabuza said calmly as he disappeared into the mist. There are eight vital spots on the body heart, kidneys, jugular, liver, spine, lungs, and the larynx hum which one shall I choose? taunted the former mist Jonin. Naruto only smirked and activated his Mangekyo Sharingan. Normally the regular Sharingan wouldn't be able to see through the chakra-infused mist, but the Mangekyo Sharingan could distinguish the difference between jutsu and person. Easily locating Zabuza trying to sneak up on him, Naruto smirked as he summoned four shuriken, infused them with wind chakra, and threw them at Zabuza. The swordsman dodged the deadly shuriken and tried to slice at Naruto, key word, tried, since Naruto dodged and kicked him out of the mist. The mist cleared showing Naruto finishing hand signs. Water style. Great waterfall jutsu, yelled Naruto. A vortex of water formed around him and violently shot at Zabuza pushing him away from the lake and into a tree. Naruto appeared in front of him with a kanai in hand and his Mangekyo Sharingan still active. Zabuza looked in his eyes and couldn't help but feel scared, who the hell are you? Your executioner, replied Naruto with an emotionless face. All of a sudden a senbon needle pierced Zabuza in the neck and his body fell into a limp form. A boy no older than fifteen landed in the tree wearing a Kiri Hunter Nin uniform. He spoke in a soft almost feminine voice, but Naruto could tell that from his scent he was a boy. His scent also revealed that he was around Zabuza a lot. Naruto realized that this must have been Zabuza's apprentice Haku. Thank you for defeating Zabuza, I could not have hoped to defeat him by myself, Haku said in thanks. Team 7 approached the scene with caution, while Haku appeared next to Zabuza and picked him up. I will take his body now to dispose of it, you have my thanks. 
Naruto decided to keep up his charade, no problem I'm happy to help. Haku then left in a swirl of leaves with Zabuza on his shoulders. Kakashi and Team 7 approached Naruto, he quickly deactivated his Mangekio Sharingan before they could notice. Good job Naruto, it's not every day that a genin beats an A-rank Jonin, Kakashi said with an eye smile, on the inside Kakashi wanted to interrogate the blonde to find out what else he was hiding. Sasuke only scowled at him. How is he so strong? It should be me with that power. I need it to destroy him. Sakura only looked at his in awe and fear, wow, he's really strong I don't believe that he can be this strong and was the dobi of the class. Inner Sakura could help but disagree with her master, cha I bet Sasuke-kun is much stronger than Naruto Baka. Tizuna looked at Naruto with newfound respect. This kid is really strong, to think that he defeated someone who was making their sensei nervous and not break a sweat. I'm glad I went to Konoha with this mission. Before Kakashi could ask him any questions he spoke, I think we should continue on to your home Tizuna-san, it's getting dark out here. Tizuna only nodded and said that his house was close by, only a few minutes up the road. Team 7 and Tizuna walked quietly toward Tizuna's house. Meanwhile Naruto was busy figuring out how to track down the missing Nin and his apprentice, if they didn't join him he would be forced to kill them to avoid fighting them in the future. Team 7 and Tizuna approached Tizuna's small two-story house. He opened the door to reveal a barely furnished and small living room, dining room. Tsunami, Inari I'm home, yelled Tizuna as he and Team 7 entered the house. A blue-haired woman wearing an apron came from the kitchen and greeted her father, Oh father it's good to see you again. These are the shinobi that protected me on my journey here. Hitaki Kakashi, the janin gave a nod, Sakura, Sasuke, and Naruto. Sakura gave a small bow, Sasuke gave a grunt, and Naruto similar to Kakashi only nodded. Tsunami gave her own bow and thanked them for protecting her father. She invited them to sit at the table while she prepared something to eat. Kakashi thought now was a good time to question Naruto about his hidden skills. So Naruto how is it that you're so skilled and was the last of your class? Asked Kakashi. Everyone perked up to hear his answer. Naruto didn't even look up at them, Kakashi sensei were shinobi, we are trained in deception and to fool our enemies. Kakashi could only nod and ask another question, then where did you learn all those high powered jutsu? Naruto mentally debated, what do you think Karama sensei should I tell them about you or lie to them? Tell the copy nin the truth but phrase it so the others don't understand, replied Karama. I learned all those jutsu from my sensei. He has thousands of years of knowledge and has been with me my entire life, answered Naruto. Everyone but Kakashi had confused looks on their faces. Kakashi realized that Naruto was talking about Kayubi. He really hoped that the fox wasn't influencing the boy in a bad direction. Sasuke was only frustrated and angry that Naruto only gave him vague answers to whom his sensei was. Sasuke wanted to know who was teaching Naruto so he could steal his sensei and learn from his instead and use that power to kill his brother. Damn it who the hell is Hidobi, yelled Sasuke. Naruto realized the reason why Sasuke was angry and mentally smirked. Don't worry your pretty little head Uchiha. Even if you did know who he was he would never train you. What why not? Asked Sasuke. Because he hates you and your damn clan. On the night your entire family was killed he was jumping for joy and wanting to shake the hand of whoever did it, Naruto replied with a smirk. Sasuke was livid. No one talked about what happened to his clan or else it would bring his wrath. Kakashi was watching from the side and was about to jump in to stop them, but Sasuke lunged himself at Naruto across the table. I'll kill you, yelled Sasuke as he reached for Naruto's throat. Sasuke was too slow and Naruto unsealed his katana and put it at Sasuke's throat. Immediately Sasuke stopped to avoid his head being sliced off. Tisk. Tisk Uchiha you know attacking a fellow Konoha Nin is punishable by death, not that that would happen you're too busy being the civilian councils. They wouldn't like that their favorite toy would be killed, that's too bad because I would have no problem killing you. I don't care what the civilian council would do to me, so killing you wouldn't be a problem since you are weak and don't even have your precious bloodline yet you still have your clan's arrogance that got them killed, said Naruto with an evil smile. Naruto. Sasuke that's enough now both of you will stop this nonsense or else I will write a disciplinary report for both of you, threatened Kakashi as he separated them from each other. Sasuke only scowled at Naruto then left to go to a corner to brood with Sakura following him like a little. 
Naruto only smirked at the Uchiha as he walked to the corner of the room. Everyone else was relieved that the tension finally dropped. Only to rise again when Tsunami served them their meal, Sasuke would glare at Naruto as he ate and Naruto would ignore him and continue eating. The tension was interrupted when the front door opened and an eight-year-old kid entered. Tizuna was the first to greet him, Inari-kun it's good to see you again. The boy named Inari ran toward his grandfather and hugged him, Gigi I missed you. Inari then turned his attention to the Konoha Nin. These are shinobi from Konoha they are here to protect me while I finish the bridge, Tizuna said with a smile. Inari only got angry, why are they here they're only going to get killed, Gato is too strong. Inari that was rude apologize, Tsunami said scolding her son. Inari ignored her and ran upstairs to his room to brood similarly like a certain Uchiha. Hey Uchiha if he broods anything like you, I think we found your long lost brother, said Naruto as he joked on Sasuke expense. Everyone laughed except Sasuke and Sakura, Sasuke then went back to his daily brooding session with Sakura at his side. Kakashi sensei what are we going to do now that Zabuza is gone? asked Sakura. Kakashi looked at the ceiling contemplating, Zabuza isn't dead, he's still alive. I just realized that Hunter Nin was probably a fake, usually Hunter Nin destroy the bodies of missing Nin on the spot except he took the body away. He also attacked Zabuza with Senban needles, usually Hunter Nin don't attack with Senban needles unless they need the target alive. So does that mean he will be back soon? asked Naruto. No, I think he'll come back in a week. The damage he sustained in your battle with him will keep him healing for a week. So for the rest of the week we will be training to get stronger, replied Kakashi. After dinner Tsunami led them upstairs to the rooms they would be sleeping in. Everyone woke up the next morning and after breakfast Kakashi led them to a clearing in the woods to begin training. What will we be training in Kakashi Sensei? asked a curious Sakura. We will be learning how to climb trees without hands, Kakashi exclaimed with an eye smile. Naruto groaned and started walking away, while Sasuke and Sakura looked at their sensei in confusion. Kakashi sweat dropped when Naruto walked away, uh Naruto where are you going? Naruto gave him an annoyed look, I've already mastered this exercise, in case you don't remember I walked on water yesterday when fighting Zabuza. Oh yeah I've been meaning to ask you, how did you do that? asked Sakura. I don't feel like explaining. Listen to Kakashi he's about to teach you the first step of the exercise, Naruto left before Sakura could annoy him anymore. Once Naruto sensed he was far away enough he bit his thumb and smeared blood on his summoning tattoo. Kachiyose no jutsu, said calmly and in a puff of smoke there was a small grey fox. Good evening Naruto-sama how may I be of service? asked the grey fox. I need you to track someone Karu, Naruto responded before taking a cloth with blood on it. This blood belongs to the person I want you to track, I got it from the battle I had with said person yesterday. Very well Naruto-sama, I will track the person to the best of my abilities, the grey fox responded before sniffing the bloody cloth, he then took off in the direction of the scent. Gato's hideout Naruto stood hiding in one of the trees overlooking what looked like a hideout. Surrounding the hideout were around 100 bandits and a chain link fence, the building itself was tall and was large apparently the architect didn't know the meaning of hideout when building it. Naruto knew the bandits stood no chance against him, but he wanted to make sure Gato was there before he stormed the hideout and slaughtered everyone. Naruto decided to sneak into the hideout and check for himself if Gato or Zabuza was inside, if not he would have to stake out the hideout until they showed up. Naruto did some quick hand signs and whispered, chameleon jutsu. The jutsu caused the light to reflect from Naruto's body and look transparent, as long as he didn't get too close he wouldn't be detected very easily. He entered the hideout evading the guarding bandits and searched room to room until he heard yelling. He looked inside a room and saw a short man in a black suit yelling at Zabuza and the fake hunter Nin about their failed mission. He slipped into the room and waited in the corner for a chance to talk to the missing Nin. Inside Gato's hideout inside the hideout, Zabuza laid in bed exhausted and with a hurt ego. How could he the demon of the mist have lost to a genin, he couldn't believe it. The kid must either have been really talented or really lucky. He vowed that next time he faced the kid he wouldn't hold back and wouldn't stop until he had the kid's head. While Zabuza ranted in his head about his feudal revenge, Haku looked at him with worry. To Zabuza, Haku was just a tool to be used then discarded. But to Haku, Zabuza was his most precious person and he would sacrifice his life for him and his dream. 
Haku worried about Zabuza. The blonde genin had really done a lot of damage with his final jutsu and the added trauma from putting him in a near-death state had only increased his recovery period. He would need to leave soon and get herbs and medicines to heal him faster so he would be 100% when fighting the Konoha team. As both missing Nin thought about their objectives and worries, a small man wearing a black suit and sunglasses, while using a cane entered the room with two bandits holding swords. Both shinobi snapped their attention at the new arrival, they could see he was angry but neither care why. How could you have lost? I paid you a lot of money to kill the bridge builder, yelled an angry Gato. Gato got closer to Zabuza. It looks like I wasted my money hiring you, I shouldn't have hired you just because you're called the Demon of the Mist. The next time you fail me I won't pay and I'll tell those real hunter Nin where you are. Gato and his bodyguards walked out of the room leaving Zabuza and Haku alone. Why do we work for them Zabuza-sama? asked Haku. Because we need the money to be able to fund another coup against the Mizukage. For the three million Ryo he is paying us, it's more than enough of payment to kill a bridge builder, responded Zabuza. All of a sudden they tensed when they heard a voice in the room. Tisk, tisk, tisk is this what the might demon of the mist has been reduced to? A lowly missing nin that will use their skills to kill civilians and working for weak businessmen? Who's there show yourself? Snapped Zabuza. Naruto stepped out of the shadows and in front of Zabuza. Haku was quick to put himself between the blonde and his master, pull out Senbon needles, and stand in a battle-ready position. Naruto put his hands up in surrender but couldn't help but smirk at their tenseness. Relax I'm not here to fight, I'm here to make you an offer that could get you out of this situation. What kind of offer? Asked Zabuza with his hand on his kabikirabocho. Why the chance to make your dream a reality and 3x what Gato has offered you, responded Naruto with a smirk. Zabuza sat there with disbelief in his eyes. How could you help me? Also how could you afford to offer me 15 million Ryo? Maybe I should start with my name. My name is Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto, heir to the Uzumaki and Namikaze clans in Konoha. The reason I can offer you the money is because I'm probably richer than Gato right now. Zabuza and Haku looked at Naruto with wide eyes. How I will be able to help you with your dream is quite simple, I will be able to fight Yugura because like him I am also a Jinchuriki. I hold the Kayubi, the strongest of the Biju. If Zabuza and Haku hadn't been surprised they sure as hell were now. They stood there with wide eyes and jaws on the ground. Let's say we accept your offer, what would you have us do? Asked Zabuza. Well I'm gathering allies to destroy Konoha. You won't have to do anything until I gather a force large enough to destroy Konoha, responded Naruto. You want to destroy Konoha, but isn't that your home? Asked Haku. A dark aura formed around Naruto, no, Konoha hasn't ever been my home. It was a living hell for me most of my life and I swore that one day I would walk the streets of Konoha while the village burned and the villagers screamed in terror. Both Zabuza and Haku shivered at the dark aura the blonde was giving off. They couldn't believe that the blonde hated his own village so much, unlike Zabuza he doesn't want to take over his home village he wants to destroy it. Can we at least think about it before accepting? Asked Zabuza. Fine in one week you will come to the bridge and after we put on a charade for my team go to the coordinates on this map, Naruto threw them a map of Nami no Kuni with an area circled, there you can give me your answer. What's at these coordinates? Asked Haku. A safe house I am going to build during the week. It will probably be finished by the time our fight ends, replied Naruto. Zabuza and Haku nodded then Naruto disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Zabuza did a lot of thinking and in the end they had nothing to lose and a lot to gain if the blonde held up his end of the bargain. Haku on the other hand could tell the blonde was evil to the core, more evil that Zabuza and had without a doubt that he would discard them when he had no use for him and Zabuza. Haku decided to not tell Zabuza since the blonde would help Zabuza achieve his dream. If Zabuza was happy then Haku was happy. The next day after Naruto had returned the previous night, he had seen that everyone was already fast asleep. He had snuck in and went to bed, he knew Kakashi would probably ask him questions in the morning but he didn't care. When Naruto woke up the next morning at dawn he got dressed quickly to avoid Kakashi at breakfast and not have to answer any questions. He cursed his luck when he came downstairs and Kakashi was sitting at the dining room table except this time instead of having his book in his face he had a face of pure seriousness. Naruto where were you last night? asked Kakashi. I was just training Kakashi sensei, casually responded Naruto. If you were just training why couldn't I find you when I went looking for you Naruto? 
asked Kakashi. Naruto got annoyed. I training my fire jutsu Kakashi, you couldn't find me because I was practicing hiding my presence too. Fine then where are you going now? I'm going to keep training since you obviously need to train the other two so they don't become a burden, responded Naruto as he walked out the door. I wasn't done talking Genin. I want you to go with Tazuna san and protect him while he's building his bridge, stated Kakashi. Fine I will be back in an hour to accompany Tazuna san to the bridge. Naruto then disappeared in a swirl of leaves before Kakashi could protest. Naruto reappeared in the woods far from the house. He unsealed paper, a brush, and ink. Might as well test out my new blood clone, thought Naruto. Naruto started drawing a very complicated sealing array. When he finished he cut his palm to draw blood and channeled a lot of chakra into his hands before slamming his hands into the paper. A bright light enveloped the area and when the light faded, an exact clone of Naruto stood where the paper used to be. Naruto was proud of himself for thinking of such an ingenious jutsu, he thought back to all the benefits the blood clone gave that shadow clones didn't. Blood clones wouldn't dispel after one hit, instead they would only dispel if they were hit with killing blows. Blood clones also produced their own chakra and would regain any chakra they used. This was useful for clones that needed to stay in the field for large amounts of time. Although one disadvantage a blood clone had was that if a clone was in the field for too long and dispelled all that information from the clone would return, but he had added a data blocking seal to the seal algorithm so when they dispelled he didn't receive the clone's memories. He gave the clone orders to protect Tazuna and obey Kakashi so he would suspect him of anything. Naruto knew he would probably not see Kakashi or his team throughout the week because he would be busy building the safe house. The clone left and Naruto made his way to the safe house location. After running for 10 miles straight he arrived at the edge of the island on the south side of Nami no Kuni. He went to work and created 50 shadow clones to help, he first used earth manipulation to make a stairway around a mile into the ground. The 25 clones went to work and used earth manipulation to sculpt out hallways and rooms into the earth. The other 25 used their wood manipulation to create support beams and furniture for the safe house. He wanted the safe house to be big enough to hold a large force, if his plans worked out he would have a lot of allies. Day before fight time flew while Naruto was building the safe house, he realized that the next day was his fight with Zabuza. He looked at the hideout and was pleased to say that it could hold and house 500 people and was made up of several levels. He made his way up the initial staircase and opened a trapdoor that led to a regular looking shack. He slapped a blood seal on the trapdoor so no one could open it unless their blood was familiar to the seal. Naruto made his way to a clearing near the house and waited for the blood clone to arrive. When it arrived it gave Naruto a recap on what had transpired the entire week. While the clone explained, he could help but frown and become annoyed. Apparently during the week Kakashi had watched him like a hawk and almost never gave him any privacy. Add to that the annoyance of Sasuke's arrogance and Sakura's fangirlish tendencies and Naruto was glad he had left the clone in his place. Unknown to them as they were so engrossed in their conversation, two eyes watched from a far distance. You would think that it was just a curious civilian, but what was peculiar was that one eye was dark colored while the other was blood red with three tomo spinning wildly. Kakashi watched as Naruto and apparently a clone conversed with his Sharingan to be able to read their lips. The clone was telling it what had happened the past week, the question was what had Naruto been doing and how had the clone lasted so long without dispelling. He remembered that when, Naruto, had sparred with Sasuke, he had gotten hit with enough force to dispel a normal shadow clone. As he contemplated he noticed that the clone had finished conversing with Naruto and dispelled, except instead of dispelling in a puff of smoke it dispelled into a pool of blood with a seal floating in the blood. Naruto was smart enough to burn the seal before leaving. But Kakashi had seen the seal algorithm and memorized it with his Sharingan. Kakashi made his way back to the house where he sat down and started reading his book hoping to not have to deal with the trouble Naruto was hiding too soon. At the bridge Kakashi and Team 7 made their way toward the bridge, they were sure that today Zabuza would come back and try and kill Tizuna again. When they reached the bridge they sensed the all too familiar chakra laced mist and the bridge workers passed out on the ground or sliced up with what looked like electric burns. What happened here? asked a scared Tazuna. One of the workers that had not passed out yet responded, Monsters, they're monsters. Team 7 prepared for battle. Naruto unsealed his katana, Kakashi revealed his Sharingan, and Sasuke and Sakura took out Kanai. The mist dissipated to reveal three figures walking out of the mist. 
The first two were the all too familiar Zabuza and Haku, although the third was not recognized by Naruto until Kakashi spoke up. Zabuza, I see that you brought back your fake hunter nin friend and an extra, or should I say Rokusho Aoi a rank missing nin from Konoha, exclaimed Kakashi. Naruto then remembered who he was, he had read in his bingo book entry that Aoi abandoned the village and stole an important scroll and the Nidimes Raijin no Ken. He was later ambushed but fought off the pursuing Anbu and captured Morino Ibiki who he tortured for information. Ibiki later escaped with the scroll while Aoi escaped with the Raijin, it was then confirmed that he joined AIM, Hidden Rain, and given Jonin rank. Naruto would have recruited Aoi, but decided against it because the only reason he was a rank was because he had the Raijin and without it he was Chunin level at best. That's right, and right now you're in the way of my money. Give us the bridge builder and we might spare your lives, threatened Aoi. Sorry we can't give you Tazuna san, but we will be taking your head and the Raijin back to Konoha, stated Kakashi. Naruto you take Zabuza. I think you'll be able to defeat him. Sasuke you take the fake hunter nin and I'll take Aoi. Sakura you protect Tazuna san, ordered Kakashi. Sasuke scowled at the fact that Naruto got to face the A rank nin while all he got was some loser that wouldn't be able to defeat an Uchiha, but he nodded nonetheless. Naruto ran to engage Zabuza, Kakashi to Aoi, and Sasuke to Haku. Naruto vs Zabuza, well Zabuza I hope you came up with an answer yet. But let's have a friendly spar so I can see what I am paying for, Naruto said with a smirk. Zabuza only nodded and drew his Kabikirabocho and Naruto his Rizaburado. Both engaged in a Kenjutsu fight, metal clanging and sparks flying as both swordsmen fought for dominance. While Zabuza had strength on his side, Naruto had speed and agility. Naruto weaved and countered Zabuza's sliced. Naruto gained the upper hand when he channeled Wind Chakra to sharpen the blade and start slicing into Zabuza's Kabikirabocho, Zabuza's eyes widened and he jumped back putting distance between him and the blonde. Naruto decided to shift the battle into ninjutsu and started making hand signs, Zabuza did the same since now Naruto had shown his advantage in Kenjutsu. Zabuza was the first to perform a jutsu, water style, water dragon jutsu. Fire style. Fireball jutsu countered Naruto with a large fireball. Both jutsu cancelled each other out. Naruto used his speed to get behind Zabuza and called out his jutsu. Wind style. Drilling air bullet. Naruto fired four air bullets and two hit Zabuza, but he dissolved into water. Water clone. Not bad, thought Naruto. Naruto was knocked out of his thoughts when Zabuza came from behind, water style, wild water wave. Naruto dodged the attack and countered fire style burning ash. Naruto expelled chakra-enhanced gunpowder from his lungs at Zabuza. The Kiri Nin tried to dodge but was burned when Naruto clicked his teeth and caused the ash to catch fire. Naruto walked up to Zabuza and put the katana to his throat only for him to dissolve into water. Naruto smirked, he was glad Zabuza was a fun challenge. Zabuza ran up to him from behind and engaged in Kenjutsu again. Zabuza had thought about using the hidden mist jutsu but squashed the idea remembering the last time he had used the jutsu. He remembered that when he had gotten close enough, he looked into the blonde's eyes and saw blood-red eyes with what looked like a star in them. It looked so similar to Kakashi's Sharingan except for the star, he wondered if it was some enhanced version of the Sharingan. He remembered how the blonde had easily evaded his attacks, almost as if he could see Zabuza as clear as day in the mist. He was knocked out of his thoughts when Naruto put some distance between them and created a clone, he didn't like how things were going. Zabuza started making hand signs, as did Naruto and the clone. Fire style. Fire dragon jutsu, exclaimed Naruto as he exhaled a large fire dragon. Wind style. Great breakthrough, exclaimed the clone and exhaled a gust of wind. The fire and wind attacks mixed, greatly increasing the power of the wind attacks. Zabuza stood wide-eyed and finished his hand signs hoping this would stop the attack. He poured as much chakra into the jutsu and yelled, Water style, water wall jutsu. Zabuza spit out a large amount of water that took the form of a wall. The water wall was able to hold back the attack, but just barely. Zabuza was exhausted and had no chakra left after the last attack. He sank to his knees and breathed hard. Naruto came up to him and handed him a soldier pill to replenish his chakra. You'll need this for when you make your escape, said Naruto. Zabuza nodded and took the pill. Once he ate it he looked around to see the destruction he and the blonde had caused. 
He then laid down to try and recover some energy he had lost fighting the blonde. Kakashi vs. Aoi Kakashi and Aoi stood apart from each other. Aoi took out and activated the region while Kakashi started forming hand signs. Kakashi knew he couldn't fight Aoi at close range while he had that sword. Water style. Water dragon jutsu. Yelled Kakashi as a water dragon rode from the ocean and attacked Aoi. Aoi jumped back to avoid the water dragon. He realized that Kakashi wasn't going to let him get near with the sword, so Aoi switched to ninjutsu as well and started making hand signs. He threw one of his umbrellas into the air and it floated in place, ninja art, raining needle death. All of a sudden the umbrella started firing a large barrage of needles at Kakashi. Kakashi had finished his hand signs before the barrage hit him, earth style, mud wall, a large wall made of earth rose from the ground and protected Kakashi from the attack. Aoi used this chance to get in close combat with Kakashi where he would have the upper hand. When he looked behind the wall he saw Kakashi was not there anymore. Time to end this! exclaimed Kakashi Kakashi did a few hand signs before bracing his right arm with his left hand. Lightning sparked from the palm of Kakashi's hand and danced around him wildly. Aoi ran toward Kakashi to behead him before he could fully charge the jutsu. Rakeri! yelled Kakashi as he thrust his hand out toward Aoi intent on piercing his chest. Both shinobi charged at each other intent on finding out which weapon of lightning was stronger. Time slowed down as they got closer and closer. When they both reached arm's length from each other all they could hear was flesh being pierced. Aoi looked down to see that Kakashi's rakery had cut through the Raijin blade and pierced his heart. Aoi sank to his knees when Kakashi removed his hand from his chest. HH how? stuttered Aoi. Kakashi looked him in the eye, my rakery is my most powerful jutsu, it once cut through a bolt of lightning. The Raijin blade was no match for my rakery. You lost now die like the scum you were, said Kakashi. Aoi had finally died after hearing Kakashi's answer, the light in his eyes flickered before going dark forever. Kakashi pulled his high eight back over his sharingan, and looked back at the other matches. He saw that Zabuza was laid on the ground with Naruto not too far away, but when he looked closer he saw that Zabuza was still breathing. He didn't think that Naruto would have let his opponent live, especially considering what he had done to the demon brothers. He then looked at Sasuke's match and watched as his student was trapped in a dome of ice and his body littered with Senbon needles. He was about to go help when the dome collapsed and Sasuke was lying in a prone position on the ground. Not going to describe the battle with Sasuke and Haku, you all know how Haku kicks Sasuke's ass. All of a sudden everyone heard clapping and turned their heads toward the source, they saw Gato accompanied by at least 200 bandits. Well, well, well it looks like you failed again Zabuza. I knew you would lose and you even lost to the same kid from last time. Wow you really are weak ha ha ha, laughed Gato. Gato what are you doing here, demanded an angry and standing Zabuza. Why I'm here to make a lot of money, paying missing Nin is always so expensive. I decided that instead of paying you, I would hire some cheap bandits to kill you after you killed the bridge builder and the other ninja. I would then collect the bounty on your head and anyone else worth something and be even richer, replied Gato. You traitor I'll kill you Gato, yelled Zabuza as he stepped forward. I don't think so, you might want to reconsider coming quietly, said Gato with a devious smirk. Gato snapped his fingers and two bandits came out of the group holding a tied up Tsunami and Inari. Tsunami Chan, Inari Kun, yelled Tazuna in fear. Now Tazuna tell the ninja to stand down and come quietly, or else your family dies, threatened Gato. Tazuna was about to obey until Naruto held his hand up to stop him, don't even if you do what he says he will still kill them. Then what should I do? asked a desperate Tazuna. Don't worry I'll get them back, said Naruto before doing a hand seal. His body glowed as the gravity seals on his body deactivated, he disappeared in a burst of speed and kicked both the bandits holding Tazuna's family and snatched Inari and Tsunami before the bandits could react. He gave them both to Tazuna before he turned his attention back to the 200 bandits. On the outside he had an emotionless mask, but on the inside his bloodlust was fighting to get outside and slaughter the bandits just for the fun of it and to bathe in their blood. It didn't help that Kurama was also encouraging him to do the same. Gato scowled when he realized he had just lost leverage against Tazuna, he then turned to the bandits he had hired. Kill them all, whoever brings me the head of Zabuza or the blonde kid gets a bonus exclaimed Gato, all the bandits let out a cheer. 
They all began to move forward until they stopped in fear in front of Naruto. Everyone tensed and looked at Naruto in fear as he radiated a large amount of killing intent. Naruto started chuckling evilly before it gradually increased until it was a full-blown evil laugh that sent shivers down everyone's spine. Naruto had just unleashed his bloodlust. Naruto opened his eyes and revealed his no longer blue eyes, but red slits. His nails grew into claws, his fangs lengthened, his whisker marks darkened, and a shroud of red chakra with two tails covered his body. Normally only one tail would appear when he was in a bloodlust state, but suppressing his bloodlust for over two months caused it to gain intensity and now that it was finally released it came back full force. Behind Naruto everyone was shaking in fear, except Sasuke who was out cold. Is the seal breaking? No it looks like the chakra is being controlled. Naruto is controlling the Kyuubi's chakra, but why is he using it to kill a bunch of bandits? Thought Kakashi. Damn the kid was right he is like Yugura, except this chakra is much more evil and powerful than when Yugura used his power, thought Zabuza. What is this power? I have never felt anything like this before. I remember him saying that he was a Jinchuriki, so this is the power of the Kyuubi. I don't like it, but if it will help Zabuza-sama achieve his dream then I will not complain, thought Haku. Naruto decided to stop intimidating and disappeared in a burst of speed, he started slaughtering the bandits. The bandits screamed in pain and horror as they watched themselves being mowed down and killed with ease. Gato looked in horror as his army was being reduced to nothing in a matter of seconds by one blonde teenager. After five minutes of slaughtering, all that was left on the bridge were chunks of bandits, the stench of burning flesh, and one pale Gato. Naruto walked up to Gato as his red chakra cloak dissipated and Gato fell to the floor and backed away in fear. NOG get a away, please I'll give you anything you want. Money, women, power just please don't kill me, pleaded Gato. What's wrong Gato? What happened to all that big talk about killing us and collecting our heads? Although I should have expected big talk from a little man, Naruto smirked when he could see Gato was turning red with anger. Naruto decided to end this, well it was nice knowing you Gato, but as I've always wanted to say, it's only business, said Naruto as he unsealed his katana and sliced Gato's head off in one fluid motion and picked up his head. Naruto made his way back to the other and inwardly smirked at the fear in their eyes and faces. He then walked up to Tizuna, and handed him Gato's head. Here Tizuna-san, as evidence that your country is now free of Gato's iron grip, said Naruto. Tizuna was knocked out of his shock and the events that had just happened came rushing back and he jumped for joy. Tsunami and Inari also had tears of joy in their eyes as they celebrated that Gato was gone and Wave was free. Over with Team 7 and a newly awakened Sasuke, Sasuke had woken up just in time to see Naruto slaughter the bandits in his chakra cloak, they looked at their teammate in fear while Kakashi looked at him in worry. Kakashi wondered if the fox had caused Naruto to slaughter the bandits mercilessly or if it was of his own free will. Either way if Naruto had been influenced or he did it of his own free will, he would have to get Naruto help before it gets worse. During the chaos no one had noticed that Zabuza and Haku had slipped away and were making their way to the safe house to accept Naruto's offer. The following day Tazuna and his family had spread the news that Gato was dead and Wave was free. Everyone in the town celebrated and threw a big party for the ninja that had helped them get rid of Gato. Currently Team 7 was enjoying the festivities as Naruto ate food, Sasuke brooded, Sakura asked for a date with Sasuke, and Kakashi drank sake while keeping an eye on Naruto. What Kakashi didn't know was that the Naruto he was watching was a blood clone. The real Naruto was currently in Gato's office going through his files and belongings. Naruto had already found bank statements from banks all over the elemental continents, with the totals amounting to over 1 billion Ryo. Although he had been wrong about being richer than Gato at first, he sure as hell was now. Now all Naruto had to do was find his checkbook and a copy of Gato's signature, he would then be able to forge fake checks and withdraw the money using blood clones disguised as Gato before the rest of the world finds out he's dead. After searching for 10 minutes of searching his office he finds nothing and kicks the desk in frustration. When he kicked the desk a secret compartment had opened up and revealed what he had been looking for and more inside was his checkbook and copies of checks with the signature in them. Also inside were deeds to properties located all over the continent in every single country. He praised his luck on such incredible finds and got to work. He made six blood clone seals and gave them the locations of the banks they were going to be going to. He told them that they needed to be done by the end of the week, or else the accounts would be claimed by the state. 
He also ordered them that once the money was all collected, they put all the money into a storage scroll and have a fox take the scroll to the original. After being given their orders the clones scattered to their assigned target and missions, Naruto sat in the chair of Gato's office and contemplated his next move. He knew Kakashi would report his outbreak to the Hokage, and then the old monkey would probably tell the council. If that happened the usual would happen, the civilians would demand his death, Danzo would demand him for emotional zombie training, and the shinobi side would be conflicted. Except with this it would give the shinobi side more reason to lean toward Danzo's way of thinking. Naruto sat in contemplation before deciding he would deal with it when the situation arrived. He made his way back to Tazuna's house and avoided the party in town, mostly because he hated parties and secondly he didn't want to attract attention if someone saw him and his clone at the same time. One week later Naruto sighed in relief, the mission was finally over and they would be heading back to Konoha. He didn't miss Konoha or anything. The problem was he had left the shadow clones doing research at his estate only enough chakra to last a week. This time he was planning on upgrading his research staff to blood clone to avoid something like that. As Team 7 waved, mostly Sakura and Kakashi, everyone in wave was at the bridge to say goodbye to their heroes. After all the goodbyes, Team 7 made their way back to Konoha. Hey I just remembered what we should call the bridge? Asked a curious tsunami. How about the great Naruto bridge, because he got rid of Gato for us and gave us back our hope, said a seriously happy Tazuna. Everyone around him nodded in agreement. Over with Naruto, he felt a shiver go down his spine with a, doing something out of character, feeling. He just shrugged it off and continued walking to the hellhole he would be burning in the future. During the last three months after the mission to Nami to Kuni, Naruto had been suffering. He was forced to once again take D-rank missions with the occasional C-rank. Naruto was currently in his backyard training ground, in front of his was a three-pronged kanai with a seal algorithm on the handle. Scattered throughout the field there were similar kanai and a group of clones surrounding each kanai. Naruto was excited just a few days ago his research clones had finally figured out the mechanics of the Hiraishin and now Naruto was going to test it out. He disappeared in a yellow flash and three seconds later reappeared near the first Hiraishin kanai, while the clones dispelled. The second yellow flash was born. Naruto would have to practice the Hiraishin since he only used it three times and traveled short distances, it took at least one quarter of his reserves. Naruto thought back to when he had returned from Nami no Kuni, he was right when he guessed that Kakashi would tell the old monkey and in turn he would tell the council. Flashback Naruto was eating at Ichiraku ramen when an anbu had interrupted his meal and told him the council had summoned him. Naruto left with the anbu and they disappeared in a swirl of leaves, they reappeared in front of the familiar doors of the council room. The Anbu escorted Naruto in and he noticed the Sandame in the front smoking his pipe. He noticed the glares of hatred and fear from the civilian council, and the emotionless faces of the clan heads and Danzo. Hello Naruto it's nice to see you, said Serutobi with a smile. Good evening Hokage-sama. Might I ask why I was summoned? Replied Naruto with an emotionless attitude. Well Naruto, we received information from your sensei that you may have lost control of your tenant while on your mission, is this true? asked Serutobi. No Hokage-sama I did not lose control over my tenant during the mission, Naruto was interrupted by a pink hair banshee. Liar, you killed all those bandits that stood in your way and almost killed my daughter, screeched Haruno Suki. Naruto leaked key at the councilwoman, who promptly sat down, don't interrupt me I wasn't finished as I was saying I didn't lose control, because I was fully in control of my tenant's power and when I was finished getting rid of the threat I stopped using my tenant's power. He then turned to Haruno Suki, also for your information, I wouldn't kill a weak whore like your daughter it would be a waste of my time. Naruto mentally smirked as the civilian council erupted in anger and demanded his head for the disrespect he had shown them. Serutobi silenced them and turned to Naruto, Naruto you are to show the council the respect they deserve. I'll show them respect Hokage-sama, the civilian council smirked smugly, I already have respect for the clan heads, but I won't show the civilians respect until they become something other than useless fools. The civilians erupted in anger until they were silenced by Serutobi again. Nara Shikaku was the next to ask a question. You said that you were in control of your tenant, how much of his power can you control? asked Shikaku. Currently I am able to control four tails, due to the durability of my body. I estimate that by the time I am 16 I will be able to control all nine tails and have full control over my tenant, answered Shikaku. 
Everyone in the council room had mixed feelings. The clan heads were worried that Naruto would lose control of his power. Danzo was having a mental orgasm, and already formulating plans on getting the Jinchuriki under his thumb. The civilian council was wetting their pants in fear since with that kind of power, he could easily take out his anger on them and no one would be able to stop him. After a few tense seconds Serutobi dismissed Naruto and the council. Naruto left with a smirk and a feeling of satisfaction. End flashback Naruto made his way to the other end of the training ground where he had 200 shadow clones trying to combine the Rasengan with his wind and fire affinities. All of a sudden he looked in the distance and two large explosions rose into the sky. He soon received the memories of the clones that had been destroyed in the blasts. The first explosion was from a successful combination of the Rasengan and his wind element, the other was a successful combination of the Rasengan and his fire element. He dispelled all his clones and decided to replicate the results, he made a clone and held out his hand. As he formed a Rasengan the clone added wind chakra into the Rasengan, the wind-natured Rasengan began to take the form of a large shuriken and screeching loudly similar to a bell. When the new Rasengan was finished, Naruto held it and quickly noticed the jutsu was going to backfire because he didn't have enough chakra control. He tried to throw it, but the jutsu dissipated as soon as it left his hand. He would have to increase his chakra control exponentially to be able to keep the jutsu under control. He would also need to find a way to throw the jutsu since if he just charged someone with it he would end up hurting himself in the blast. Naruto moved on to the other jutsu. He held out his hand and formed a Rasengan while a clone added fire chakra to it. The results were very painful since the temperature skyrocketed around the jutsu and he was having trouble ignoring the pain. When the jutsu was finished he saw in his hand was a spinning ball of white flames, he hissed in pain as the jutsu cooked his arm and threw the technique. Unfortunately the jutsu didn't dissipate, it exploded once it left his hands. Naruto was sent flying back into the tree and hit his head and fell unconscious. He woke up a few hours later with a massive headache, he got up and went home to bed since he would need the energy tomorrow. Next day Naruto was currently walking toward a meeting spot for him and his team to talk to their sensei, as he walked he looked at his badly damaged arm. It was so damaged that it was taking Kurama a long time to fix it, the reason it was taking a long time was because the jutsu had completely cooked his arm down to the bone and the explosion had all but destroyed his arm. Kurama was working frantically to repair the arm and have it fully functioning, it had taken him the entire night to heal the arm and it would take him another day to reconnect the nerve endings and chakra pathways in his arm. As Naruto walked he heard a commotion in the nearby street and decided to investigate, he saw that a kid a little older than him wearing a pajama suit with cat ears and makeup was holding up a little kid with a long scarf and spiky hair by the throat. Behind him was a blonde girl with four pony tails holding a giant fan. On the other side were two kids around the same age as the one getting beat up and everyone's favorite pink-haired whore, his teammate, Haruno Sakura. Konkuro stop this you'll only get him mad, said the blonde girl. Relax Tamari, I don't sense him here and this kid needs to learn some manners, replied Konkuro. Let me go, exclaimed Konohamaru. Please let Konohamaru go, he didn't mean to bump into you, begged Sakura. Naruto watched as Konkuro raised his fist to hit Konohamaru and then all of a sudden a rock hit his hand and forced Konkuro to drop him. Naruto looked up at where the rock came from and saw none other than, Konoha's number one emo, Uchiha Sasuke sitting up in a tree trying to look cool. What intrigued him was a young redhead behind Sasuke that was doing a good job hiding his presence. What do you think you're doing brat? yelled Konkuro as he nursed his injured hand. Just sitting here and watching some backwater ninja beat up little kids, said Sasuke with a smirk. Naruto watched a Konkuro turned red in anger and Tamari blushed looking at Sasuke. Naruto only raised an eyebrow at Tamari's blush. Kami is every girl in the world attracted to emo. Thought Naruto. I wonder what I would look like emo. Careful what you wish for Kit, said Kurama as he sent mental images of Naruto with dark clothes and black hair sitting in a corner brooding with a horde of fangirls trying to get in his pants. Naruto shivered at the mental images and shook his head to get rid of them and turned his attention back to the confrontation. Konkuro was livid that he had been showed up by a brat, so he pulled out the bandaged object behind him. You're going to use crow for this, asked Tamari in surprise. Before Konkuro could answer the redhead decided to make himself known. Konkuro stop it, you're a disgrace to our village, said the redhead in an emotionless voice. 
Everyone looked shocked at the redhead's sudden arrival. Naruto decided to get closer and activated his chameleon jutsu to stand behind Sakura. As he got closer he noticed something was off about the redhead and his chakra. Kit the redhead I can feel Shukaku inside him, he's soon as Jinchuriki, said Kurama. Interesting, if I can sense Shukaku shouldn't he be able to sense you? asked Naruto. No, you Mokotan bloodline prevent my chakra from leaving you unless you want it to, explained Kurama. Naruto mentally nodded and continued watching the red head with a new interest. He was pretty sure that he was mistreated in Suna so he could use that and manipulate him to his side. Gee Gara I, I was just trying to teach this punk a lesson, said Konkara with fear in his voice. Shut up or I'll kill you, said Gara with no emotion. Konkara was quiet and didn't speak anymore as Gara led them away. Sasuke jumped down from the tree and landed in front of the group. Wait what's your name? Sasuke asked Gara. My name is Sabaku no Gara. I am also curious as to know your name, asked Gara. My name is Uchiha Sa. Gara interrupted him, not you, the one behind the pink hair girl. Impressive, usually no one can find me when I am using his jutsu, said Naruto as he deactivated his chameleon jutsu and reappeared behind Sakura, who jumped away in surprise. My name is Uzumaki Namikaze Naruto. I assume you are here for the Chunin exams asked Naruto. That's right me and my sibling will be in the exams, will you also be in the exams? asked Gara. That's right I will be looking forward to seeing if one or nine will be victorious, replied Naruto while releasing a small amount of Kurama's chakra. Gara's eyes widened when he realized that Naruto was a Jinchuriki like him. Tamari and Konkuro's eyes also widened since with him here he could jeopardize the plan. I look forward to killing you and proving my existence during the exams, said Gara before disappearing in a swirl of sand with his siblings. Sasuke was angry, he had found someone strong that would be a challenge for him and they are more interested in Naruto. Why would anyone be interested in fighting the Dobi, he was an Uchiha. The sand shinobi should have been cowering in fear at his presence, but instead he dismissed him. Sasuke's pride wouldn't take it, when he saw the red-headed sand shinobi, he would kill him. Sakura was quiet, not because she was scared more like trying to solve a puzzle. Naruto had told the redhead his name was Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, even though Sakura was weak physically she wasn't weak academically. She used her vast knowledge and realized Namikaze was the last name of the Yandaimi Hokage, and Naruto had just called himself Namikaze. Naruto. Why did you call yourself Namikaze? asked Sakura. Well, Sakura normally when someone is introducing himself they say their entire name, answered Naruto sarcastically. Cha don't let him talk to you like that, kick his ass, yelled Inner Sakura. Normally Sakura would obey Inner Sakura, but she learned to never obey Inner Sakura when it came to Naruto because Naruto would end up killing her. I mean why you would call yourself Namikaze if the only Namikaze was the Yandaimi Hokage. You know Haruno for the supposed top Kunoichi, you sure are retarded. I call myself Namikaze because my father was the Yandaimi Hokage, belittled Naruto. To say she was shocked would be an understatement, she couldn't believe that Naruto was the son of the Yandaimi Hokage. If she looked closer she could see that he closely resembled the Yandaimi, she hit herself for not realizing sooner. Sasuke on the other hand didn't really care that Naruto's father was the Yandaimi, the Namikaze were nothing compared to the Uchiha. Naruto decided he was done playing 20 questions and disappeared in a swirl of leaves to the meeting place. Sasuke and Sakura made their way to the meeting place with Sasuke walking in silence and Sakura asking for a date. Meeting place. After two hours of waiting in a bridge, Sasuke and Sakura were bored out of their minds except Naruto who was keeping himself busy by reading a book about advanced sealing. Kakashi showed up in a puff of smoke, with his trademark eye smile. Yo greeted Kakashi. You're late, yelled Sakura. Sorry, I crossed a black cat on the way here and had to go the long way around, said Kakashi while everyone's sweat dropped. Anyway I'm here to give you these forms, they are entry forms for the Chunin exams. If you decide to enter you need to show up tomorrow at the academy in room 301 inches explained Kakashi. Everyone took a form and Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke. Sasuke gave an arrogant smirk as he looked at his form and walked home. Sakura looked worried and scared while following Sasuke. Naruto looked indignant on the outside, but internally was smirking. Next day, Naruto, 
Sasuke and Sakura were walking through the halls of the academy when they noticed a large group of people gathered around the door. Naruto immediately realized that there was a genjutsu over the sign to confuse contestants, and there were two chunin guarding the doors hanged like genin. He wanted to walk past them because he knew the genjutsu was only here to prevent genin who can't even distinguish a genjutsu from entering the exam. He looked over at Sasuke who had an arrogant smirk on his face and was walking up to the crowd. Immediately Naruto grabbed Sasuke and covered his mouth before he could reveal the genjutsu. Uchiha what the hell are you doing? Can't you see that the genjutsu is there to keep the weak teams out? Whispered Naruto. Sasuke pushed himself out of Naruto's grip. Of course I do Dobi, what do you take me for an idiot? Could have fooled me, said Naruto as he walked past the crowd and toward the stairs with a confused Sakura and a scowling Sasuke. As they walked to the right room they were stopped by a boy a year older than them wearing a green jumpsuit and orange leg warmers. Please wait, are you Uchiha Sasuke? Asked Lee. That's right what do you want? Replied Sasuke arrogantly. I want to fight you and prove that a genius of hard work can beat a genius of talent. Stated Lee enthusiastically. Fine, but you'll just lose like all the other losers in these exams, replied Sasuke smugly. Oi Uchiha don't underestimate this guy, said Naruto even though he didn't care if Sasuke got hurt. Sasuke ignored Naruto and got in his Uchiha fighting style stance, while Lee got in his Goken stance. Sasuke started off and tried to do a roundhouse kick, only for it to be blocked easily. Lee then went on the offensive and started giving a barrage of punches and kicks that Sasuke couldn't block. Sasuke jumped back and activated his Sharingan to be able track Lee's moves. So that is the fabled Sharingan? Asked Lee. That's right with these eyes you are nothing before me and should just give up now, replied Sasuke arrogantly. No, I cannot give up I will defeat you and prove I can be a splendid shinobi. Stated Lee before disappearing in a blur. Sasuke was able to keep track of his until Lee punched him in the face. Sasuke couldn't believe it he had been hit and his Sharingan wasn't able to follow the attack. Lee continued barraging Sasuke with punches and kicks until he kicked Sasuke high in the air and loosened his bandages. He wrapped his bandages around Sasuke and turned upside down while falling straight to the earth spinning at breakneck speeds. He was stopped by what looked like a pinwheel holding his loose bandages, Lee saw a turtle standing on the other side of the room. Lee immediately released Sasuke from his bandages and kneeled in front of the turtle. Lee, do you know what you have done? That move is forbidden from being used on a fellow Konoha shinobi, I hope you are ready for your punishment. Stated the turtle angrily. All of a sudden an exact clone of Lee appeared on top of the turtle, the only difference was that he was taller and wearing a Jonin vest. Lee I am very disappointed in you, you willingly disobeyed me and performed that move on a comrade of the village, scolded the older Lee clone. But Guy sensei, I had good ray, Lee was cut off when Guy punched him and sent him flying across the room. You fool, yelled Guy. There is never a good reason to excuse attacking a comrade, you have greatly diminished your flames of youth. Yelled Guy. Lee gasped and began crying anime tears, I am sorry Guy sensei. I will now train 100x harder and strengthen my flames of youth. Yelled a depressed, enthusiastic Lee. That's my student I couldn't be prouder of you. Said Guy as he gave Lee a thumbs up and smiled so brightly that his teeth shined. Lee began crying even more anime tears, Guy sensei. Guy joined him in crying, Lee. They began running toward each other, Team 7 watched in horror at what was unfolding in front of them. Guy sensei, Lee. Guy sensei, Lee, they met in the middle and hugged while a sunset genjutsu appeared in the background. Holy shit, what the hell is this? My eyes they burn, Naruto mentally yelled. Naruto activated his Sharingan to dispel the genjutsu, screw it if the village finds out about my Sharingan, as long as I stop the genjutsu I'll be happy. Unfortunately the Sharingan didn't dispel the genjutsu, it only served to memorize the most horrible experience Naruto ever had. Look away Kit, look away, yelled Kurama as he tried to dispel the genjutsu by flooding Naruto's body with his chakra, but the two failed miserably. Team 7 immediately left the two clones to their hug and agreed to never speak of the incident again. They walked upstairs to find Kakashi waiting for them at the door. Yo, you made it and all of you are here, said Kakashi with his signature eye smile. Why would it matter that we would all be here? 
asked Naruto. Because the Chunin exams are supposed to be taken as a team and if one of you wasn't here I wouldn't let you enter, said Kakashi. Naruto and Sasuke frowned, Sakura was relieved. After one last, good luck, Kakashi left in a puff of smoke. Team 7 entered the exam room and were immediately barraged by Ki by the other teams. Sakura had trouble breathing, Sasuke was breaking a sweat, and Naruto just shrugged and released his own key. The other teams immediately turned the other direction away from Team 7. All of a sudden Sasuke was tackled to the ground by Ino. Did you miss me Sasuke-kun? Asked Ino while lying on top of Sasuke. Oi Ino pig get off Sasuke-kun, can't you see that he doesn't like you? Yelled Sakura. Go away forehead, Sasuke-kun loves me and is probably glad he finally gets to see me. Replied Ino. Ino why do you have to be so troublesome? Shikamaru sighed as he approached with Choji who was eating chips. Yahoo, it looks like we all made it here, exclaimed Kiba with Akamaru barking in agreement. Yes, it seems our entire graduating class is attending the Chunin exams, said Shino in his monotone voice. Hanada approached from behind her teammates as shy as ever. Naruto thought that her Jonin sensei would have broken her out of her shy shell, apparently whoever her Jonin sensei was she was just as worthless as Hanada. As Naruto's class talked, Naruto noticed they were gaining a lot of attention from the rest of the room. He also noticed a silver-haired teen with glasses was approaching their group. You guys should be quiet, you're attracting a lot of attention, said the silver-haired boy. Who are you? asked Sakura. My name is Yukushi Kabuto, replied the teen. Have you taken the exams before? asked Ino. Actually I've taken them seven times already, said Kabuto. Wow. You must at this, stated Kiba. Actually since I have taken these exams for so long, I have been able to collect information about teams and contestants, said Kabuto. Do you have information on Sabaku no Gara and Rock Lee, asked Sasuke. Kabuto found a card that showed Gara. he is the son of the Kaze Cage and is the teammate of his elder siblings Konkuro and Tamari, he's completed 12 C ranks and, while even 1 B ranked, it's also said he completed all the missions without getting a scratch. The rookies were quiet when they learned of such a dangerous foe. Kabuto shuffled his cards until he found the right one. Rock Lee is a member of Team 9, his Jonin Sensei is the Taijutsu specialist Meta Guy, and his teammates are Hayuga Neji, the Rookie of the Year, and Tenten, the Kunoichi of the Year. He's completed 50 D ranks and 15 C ranks. He is said to be awful at Ninjutsu and Genjutsu, but his Taijutsu is at least high Chunin level. I should also tell you that this year Konoha had entered 57 teams, Suna 1 team, AIM 21 teams, Kusa Hidden Grass 17 teams, and 1 teams from Odo. Although I wouldn't worry about the Odo team, they are a new village and probably don't produce strong shinobi. Naruto snapped his attention to the sound of running coming toward Kabuto, a split second later three genin jumped from the crowd and attacked Kabuto. The first genin looked like a mummy with his entire face covered in bandages and only his right eye was visible. The second genin had a Y smirk on his face and he wore a shirt with the kanji for death printed on it. The last genin was a girl with long black hair, obsidian eyes, and wore a sleeveless camouflage shirt and camouflage pants. The one-eyed Odo genin threw a punch at Kabuto which he easily dodged, but Naruto cringed in pain as a sound wave attacked his enhanced ears. Naruto looked up and saw that Kabuto fell to his knees and emptied his stomach. Don't underestimate Odo, we will definitely advance the Chunin exams and bring glory to our village, said the one-eyed Genin. Yeyu Konoha weaklings are at the top of the world anymore, now it's Odo's time to shine. Stated the other male teammate smugly. Before any of the Konoha nin could retort there was a large puff of smoke in the front of the room and a tall man wearing a trench coat and a Konoha high 8 covering his head appeared in front of the class. All right sit down and shut up, we will begin the written part of the Chunin exams. You will have one hour to complete the nine questions on the test, after the hour you will be given a final question. Begin. One hour later, if no one else wants to leave then I only have one more thing to say, you pass yelled ibiki what what about the final question yelled kiba there was no final question a chunin must always make difficult decisions during missions with dire consequences this was a test to see if you could handle the pressure and see it through it proves you are chunin worthy replied ibiki 
All of a sudden the window to the room was shattered and a banner appeared saying, the sexy and single proctor of the second exam, Mitarashi Anko. Naruto felt a groan escaping his mouth because he knew Anko and he wasn't looking forward to the hell she would probably put him through. All the other genin just looked at Anko wide-eyed, not believing that all she was wearing was a coat to cover her modesty. Some wished a breeze would blow the trench coat away and give them a peek as to what she was hiding, many were already having nosebleed as they fantasized about the scantily dressed Anko. The girls on the other hand were having separate reactions. One half of the girls were feeling jealousy toward Anko and her sexy figure and generous assets, the other half were angry that she was showing herself off to the entire room and taking all the boys' attention. You're just in time Anko, I was finished with them when you came in, spoke Ibiki. Good, it looks like there are still 50 teams you're losing your touch Ibiki, teased Anko. What can I say it looks like the candidates this year will be very entertaining, responded Ibiki. Don't worry by the time I'm done with them there won't even be half that number of teams, stated Anko with a sinister smirk. All right you bastards meet me at training ground 44 in 15 minutes or else you fail said Anko as she jumped back out the window and left toward her favorite playground. Naruto stood up and walked toward his two team members, follow me I know where the training grounds are. Both team members nodded and followed Naruto as he made his way out of the testing room and headed toward the Forest of Death. Forest of Death After arriving at the Forest of Death, Naruto waited in silence until Anko began listing off the rules. All right you gakis this is the forest of death my personal favorite playground, for the next five days the forest will be your home, you will be inside the forest trying to reach the tower located in the middle off the training grounds. Anko then took out two scrolls, a white and a blue scroll. Your objective in the forest is obtaining both scrolls to be able to enter the tower. Each of your teams will get one scroll and you have to steal the other from an enemy team. Anko noticed that Naruto wasn't paying attention to a word she was saying she promptly threw a kunai at Naruto. Naruto surprised her when he caught it and threw it back causing her to jump away, when she jumped away her trench coat moved and revealed a full view of her assets to those who looked quick enough to catch her wardrobe malfunction. Immediately Jenin were thrown back from huge nose bleed and some passed out from blood loss with a perverted smile. Naruto just smirked at the situation he had just caused, while Anko was annoyed that the blonde had caught her off guard like that. She quickly moved behind him and pressed her chest against his back. Naruto stiffened at the close contact, not being used to it. Well, well I guess we have a pretty brave little genin, now don't we? It's too bad that this forest has killed a lot of brave genin, said Anko trying to intimidate Naruto. Naruto smirked and replied with a smug smile before pointing at Kiba, this forest is a joke, and the animals in it are harmful as the puppy on the Inazuka's head. I bet me and my team will be the first to get to the tower. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out if you were strong enough to pass the forest or just another meal for my pets, replied Anko as she made her way back to the front of the group. She knew that Naruto wouldn't be intimidated by the forest, but that didn't mean the surrounding genin wouldn't. Anko then motioned for the surrounding chunin to pass out the death waivers. All right you bastards, these are death waivers stating that if you were to die in the forest of death, Konoha is not responsible for your deaths. Once you sign them you can hand them in and receive your scroll, then you will make your way to your designated gate. After handing in their forms and receiving their heaven scroll, they made their way to gate 59 and waited for the timer to begin. Naruto turned to his teammates, we will need to stay together, me and Sasuke will take out the enemy teams. Sakura you just stay back and make sure we aren't ambushed. The buzzer sounded and the gates swung open. Team 7 rushed inside, the second exam had begun. 30 minutes later, Naruto had used his advanced sense of smell to track one of the other teams, Team 7 waited in the trees overhead as they watched a team from AIM set up traps around their camp. He could tell that they were weak as Sakura, so they wouldn't be much of a challenge. Sasuke was the first to move, he jumped down on the first genin and kicked him hard into a tree. Naruto followed as he appeared behind the second genin before jamming a three-pronged kunai into his throat and watched him bleed out until he died. The last genin as one of his teammates is knocked out and the other is killed by the Konoha team. Give us your scroll and I might think about letting you go, stated Naruto sinisterly. The aim genin looked at him in fear and took out a heaven scroll and put it on the floor. 
TT there T that T's S my scroll LL, now J just let T me G go. Naruto took the scroll before burning it with a small fire jutsu, sorry we already have a heaven scroll, I guess you have nothing to offer. Naruto smiled evilly, before the aim genin could beg for his life Naruto threw a wind enhanced three prong kunai into his head killing him instantly. Naruto you didn't have to kill him, berated Sakura. Sakura in these exams we are enemies and if besides the proctor said we could kill so I'm going to take advantage of that, said Naruto as he finished with an evil smirk that caused Sakura to shudder. Let's get going we still need to find an earth scroll, said Naruto as he jumped into the tree. Sasuke-kun why didn't you stop Naruto from killing him? asked Sakura to her crush. Why should I care if the Dobi kill some trash from a rival village, replied Sasuke with a shrug. Sakura just lowered her head in disappointment at her teammates' low morality, she then began following them as Naruto locked onto another team's scent. About one hour later they hid behind some bushes as they spied on a team from Kusa, they didn't spy for too long since a red-headed girl with red eyes, glasses, and brown shinobi attire sensed them. There's someone behind those bushes. She yelled at her teammates. Her teammates threw shuriken into the bushes, Team 7 jumped from the bushes into the trees. Sakura stayed back on the tree as Naruto and Sasuke engaged the Kusa team from behind. Karen where are they? asked the Kusa genin. Karen closed her eyes and scanned the area, they're behind you. The Kusa genin turned around just in time to stop Naruto's kunai, the genin turned in time to stop a kick to his solar plexus from Sasuke. Naruto and the Kusa genin fought for dominance, Naruto smirked while the other scowled. Naruto decided he was tired of playing around and channeled wind chakra through his kunai. The three-pronged kunai cut through the other kunai like a hot knife through butter, the Kusa genin couldn't dodge in time and was slashed by Naruto's kunai. He looked at his injury and saw it was a really deep wound and he was bleeding a lot. He fell to his knees bleeding as Naruto approached and positioned a kunai at his throat. Any last words? asked Naruto. Yeah, you, yelled the Kusa genin. You're brave, not begging or pleading for your life. Just for that I'll give you a quick death. Naruto then quickly stabbed him in the heart killing him instantly. Sasuke was currently engaged in a taijutsu battle with the Kusa genin. Sasuke smirked as he was able to easily push the genin back and make him struggle. Sasuke then saw that Naruto was done with his kill and moved to end his fight, he started to speed his attacks up and landed a chakra enhanced kick to the genin's stomach sending him flying back toward tree. Sasuke watched as he flew toward the tree and heard a loud snap, the Kusa genin then slumped over dead since his spine had snapped from the force of hitting the tree. Karen watched as her two teammates died, but she really didn't care about them. They had always hated Karen for holding them back, she would always support them from the back because she wasn't a frontline fighter. They hated her for that because they thought she was a burden to the team, even her sensei thought she was a burden holding back two promising shinobi. Naruto searched the genin's pockets until he found an earth scroll. Yes, this is the right scroll. Now let's head to the tower before anyone else can get there, said Naruto as he tossed the scrolls to him for safekeeping. Naruto turned to look at Karen expecting to see sadness, anger, depression, or fear. What he didn't expect to see was indifference, happiness, relief, and satisfaction. He was confused until he realized that she must have hated her teammates, the look on her face was the same look on his face whenever he killed a villager that tried to attack him when he was younger. The satisfaction that the person who hated and scorned you died a horrible dead in front of you. You guys go ahead I want to check if I can get some supplies from their bodies, I'll catch up to you later. Naruto lied since he wanted to be alone and tried to recruit Karen to his side, he could see that she probably had a gifted sensory ability and would make a valuable addition to his forces. Sasuke just shrugged as he jumped on a tree and headed ahead. Sakura frowned leaving the girl alone with Naruto, she already knew Naruto moral compass wasn't pointing north she hoped he wouldn't do anything that revealed his moral compass pointed completely south. Sakura after a moment of thinking decided to trust Naruto and went to catch up to Sasuke. Naruto stood in the clearing in front of a kneeling Karen. Karen noticed he was just standing there looking at him. Well, aren't you going to take their supplies? asked Karen. No, I have plenty of supplies. Aren't you going to scream at me for killing your teammates? replied Naruto. Karen shook her head. I hated those two, 
they would always leave me behind and insult me just because I wasn't the fighting type. I'm more of a support type of shinobi since I have a strong sensory ability. Interesting, so what are you going to do now that your team is dead? Asked Naruto. I have no idea. My sensei will probably just toss me aside now that his two prized students are dead. Well, you could come with me if you want, Naruto said as he rubbed his chin. Karen looked at him skeptically, you mean join Konoha? Naruto laughed, no, I mean join me as a partner. I'm going to leave this weak village soon and I could use powerful and useful allies. Karen scanned his chakra for any deceit or malice, when she scanned she was surprised with what she sensed. Her ability was that she was able to tell what kind of person someone is by their chakra, she could also sense chakra from far away and heal using her blood. She could sense that Naruto's chakra was dark, evil, cold, and hateful. When she looked deeper she could feel a tiny part of his chakra was bright, good, and warm but it was rapidly being eaten up by the dark chakra. She knew that Naruto must have been a good and caring person when he was younger, but then some event must have caused the seeds of hate to spread and slowly consume his nice and caring chakra. She decided reluctantly to trust him since she really had nothing to lose if she trusted him. All right I'll join you, but I can't really leave safely. The other teams and animals will kill me, said Karen. Naruto chuckled and threw a Horishin Kanai on the ground. Don't worry I have a way of getting out of the forest, just grab my hand and I can drop you off at my compound. Naruto held out his hand and Karen hesitantly grabbed it. Naruto then concentrated on a Horishin Kanai at his compound and disappeared in a yellow flash. Namikaze Compound Naruto and Karen reappeared back at his compound in a yellow flash. Welcome to my home, go ahead and take one of the bedrooms upstairs. If you want to use the training grounds in the backyard, stay away from the fence since it will kill anyone that it doesn't recognize that gets close. Anyway, I should probably get back since I still have an exam to finish, said Naruto. Wow this place is huge, are you from a rich clan? Asked Karen. Yeah. This is the Namikaze clan compound. It was left for me by my father the Yandaimi Hokage, Namikaze Minato, replied Naruto. Karen was shocked to find out that he was the son of the Yandaimi Hokage, and even more shocked when she remembered he wanted to leave the village. You're the son of the Yandaimi Hokage, then why would you want to leave the villagers must love you? Naruto's face saddened a bit, the villagers don't love me, in fact it's the opposite they all hate me. Why? asked Karen, because before my father died he sealed the Kyubi in me and told the old monkey Serutobi to tell the villagers I contained the Kyubi and I be treated like a hero, replied Naruto. Naruto continued, the villagers always viewed me as the Kyubi instead of just the container, when I was six years old I was chased into an alley by some drunks and almost killed. Wow, that's horrible but did the Sandame do anything? asked Karen. Naruto's face turned angry, no, the old monkey just stood by and watched it happen. He would always lecture me about forgiving the villagers that attacked me and would release the same villagers with a slap on the wrist. That bastard could have kept his mouth shut and not told the village, I could have been adopted and had a family but it was all ruined by the Sandame and his stupidity. Yelled Naruto as he lost his temper. I'm sorry, said Karen apologetically. Naruto's face softened, it's alright I was just angry and lost my temper. Although one good thing did come out of the Sandame's stupidity. What? asked Karen. While the drunks tried to kill me in the alley when I was six, I passed out and met Kyubi. He decided to help me get my revenge on the villagers and has been helping me ever since. He's been training me since I was six and was my first friend, replied Naruto. Ah I'm touched Kit, said Kurama with fake tears. Naruto mentally laughed, shut up Furball. Anyway I told you my story. Hopefully I can hear yours when I get back from the exams. See you later Karen Chan. Naruto waved as Karen blushed at the honorific he gave her. All right bye Naruto kun. Karen put her hand over her mouth as she blurted a personal honorific with Naruto's name. Naruto only laughed as he disappeared in a yellow flash. As Naruto left, he left Karen thinking. Maybe he can still be saved from that darkness that is eating away at him from the inside. Maybe one day that warm. Good chakra will push back and replace that dark, evil chakra that resides in him, thought Karen since the whole conversation she had been watching his chakra through the conversation, she noticed that the bright, 
warm chakra was slowly fighting back against the dark, evil chakra. Don't worry Naruto-kun, I will save you from the darkness I promise. A team of aim nins looked at the strange kanai in the middle of the clearing with interest, they had never seen a three-pronged kanai before or the strange writing on the handle. I wonder whose it is? asked an overweight aim nin. The leader with a scar over his eye took the kanai from him, who cares, it looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to keep it. They were so fixated on the kanai they didn't notice the yellow flash behind them. The last aim nin decided to voice his opinion. Why do you think the writing on it means? It's a formula used for a teleportation jutsu, you may have heard of it. The technique is called the Hiraishin no jutsu, explained a mysterious voice. Immediately the aim nins wear on guard and back to back, ready to face the ambush they thought was coming. Naruto stepped out of the shadows and in front of the aim team with a bloodthirsty smirk. Who the hell are you? demanded the leader. Me. I'm just a genin taking the chunin exams, said Naruto in a childish voice. Ha. Huh. This guy doesn't look very tough let's just kill him and take his scroll, said the last aim nin Eili. You know I feel like you guys aren't worth my time, but you will make great target practice for my Mangekio Sharingan, stated Naruto as he closed his eyes and reopened them to reveal his Mangekio pupil design. So what you have some special eyes, we're still going to kill you, said the leader as he approached Naruto with a kanai. Naruto just stood in place and let the genin slice him. The leader smirked as he sliced Naruto's neck only for the attack to completely pass through Naruto. What the hell was that? asked the leader. That was one of my eye techniques called Kamui, here's another for you teammate, said Naruto before he looked at this fat teammate and thought, Amaterasu. Naruto's left eye started to bleed and black flames started to burn the aim nin. He screamed in agony as the black flames burned his skin to the bones until he was nothing but ashes. His teammates looked in horror as their teammate was burned alive with black flames. They jumped back and prepared to have the battle of their lives while Naruto practiced his techniques on some useless genin. The aim team leader took his umbrella from his back and threw it into the air and the umbrella fired a barrage of senbon needles at Naruto. The other aim nin used this chance and threw kanai with exploding tags attached to them. Ninja art. Raining needle death, yelled the leader. Naruto looked unimpressed and just watched the Senbon needles and explosive kanai quickly head toward him. The kanai reached first and exploded causing a cloud of dust to obstruct their view of Naruto, they looked closer to make sure Naruto was dead. The aim team leader was too slow to dodge what looked like a black skeletal arm that erupted from the dust cloud and grabbed him. The dust cleared and showed Naruto unharmed, but he was surrounded by a skeletal ribcage with one arm. Too bad. I guess you weren't strong enough. Don't worry you death will be very painful, said Naruto with a sinister smirk. He used the Suzano arm to throw the leader into a tree and turned his attention to the final teammate. The genin back away in fear begging for his life, unfortunately Naruto had shown enough mercy for one day. He deactivated the Suzano and activated the Kamui from his left eye, he watched as an interdimensional vortex ripped the genin apart before completely ing him in. He walked back to the leader and saw he was trying to crawl away. Naruto noticed that his legs were probably broken he smirked. Naruto walked over and stepped on his broken leg, the leader hissed in pain. Where do you think you're going? asked Naruto with a smirk. Please just l let em me go oh, pleaded the aim nin. Naruto put his hand on his chin and hummed, no, I don't think so. In fact you will make an excellent sacrifice for the Edo Tensai. Naruto activated the Kamui in his right eye and ed the genin into his eyes dimension. The leader was screaming in fear the whole way inside. Naruto decided he had had enough fun and picked up his teammate's smell, but when he picked up his teammate's scent he also picked up a strong smell of snakes. He headed toward them and picked up speed, hoping they weren't in danger. Not that he cared about them, if they died he wouldn't be able to advance to the next round. With Sasuke Sasuke and Sakura were making their way toward the tower, they were suddenly stopped by a strong gust of wind that slammed them into a tree. Akusa Genin appeared from the tree, and stood in front of the partial Team 7. My, my, it's good to finally meet you Sasuke-kun, said the Kusa Kunoichi. Who are you and what do you want from me, hissed Sasuke. Me? I'm just here to offer you the power to kill Itachi, but you will have to prove you are worthy of my gift, replied the Kusa Nin. The Kusa Nin gave off a large amount of ki, the amount of ki caused Sakura and Sasuke to freeze in place and not able to move, 
Sakura fell to her knees and Sasuke tried his hardest to move despite the fear, as the Kusa Nin approached she started making hand signs and finished on the snake sign. A huge gust of wind approached both Genin, Sasuke knew if he didn't dodge him and Sakura would be killed. Sasuke got desperate and pulled out a kanai to stab himself, the pain overwhelmed the key and he was able to grab Sakura and dodge the attack. Well, you used pain to regain control of your body. Impressive, I think I will play with you for a while Sasuke-kun. After Sasuke put unconscious Sakura in a safe location, he went to fight the Kusa Nin and hoped he could defeat her. The Kusa Nin attacked Sasuke, both started out with Taijutsu with Sasuke throwing a barrage of punches and kicks while the Kusa Nin dodged effortlessly. Sasuke grit his teeth and activated his Sharingan while he sent a roundhouse rick toward her head, the Kusa Nin ducked and punched Sasuke in the solar plexus sending him back into the tree. Sasuke landed on the branch and threw a kanai at the Kusa Nin, who in turn caught the kanai. I'm disappointed in you Sasuke-kun, you'll never be able to kill Itachi if this is your strength, mocked the Kusa Nin. Sasuke turned red in anger, shut up, I will kill Itachi and avenge the Uchiha clan. Sasuke took out five shuriken and threw them at the Kusa Nin, who effortlessly deflected them with the kanai he had caught. Sasuke smirked as he pulled on the ninja wire attached to the shuriken, the ninja wire wrapped around the Kusa Nin and incapacitated her. Sasuke did some quick hand seals, fire style, dragon flame jutsu. Sasuke brought up the ninja wire to his mouth and set it on fire. The fire traveled down the wire and began burning the trapped Kusa Nin. Sasuke smirked as the Kusa Nin screamed in agony while her body was on fire. The fire died down and Sasuke was shocked when he saw the Kusa Nin wasn't dead, her skin had peeled off and behind her face was another face except this face was pale white, with purple markings around his eyes, and yellow slit eyes. Ku, Ku, Ku. Well done Sasuke-kun I never expected you to trick me like that, but I'm afraid you still need to prove you deserve my gift, chuckled the pale mysterious man. Who the hell are you? yelled Sasuke. Orochimaru, S rank missing Nin, one of the legendary Sanin, and the most wanted criminal in Konoha right next to Uchiha Itachi, responded a mysterious voice. Both Sasuke and Orochimaru looked around to find the owner of the voice, Orochimaru was especially surprised since he couldn't sense anyone around. Naruto stepped out from the shadows and in front of both of them. Ku, 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 if it isn't one of Sasuke's teammates, I'm surprised that you were able to get this close without me detecting you, said Orochimaru with amusement in his voice. What's an S rank missing nin doing in Konoha during the Chunin exams? asked Naruto. I'm just here to give young Sasuke kun a gift and then I will be on my way, replied Orochimaru. You're lying and I know it, I'll just have to beat the information out of you, said Naruto as he took out a bottle of pills from his vest. I'll have to go all out from the beginning, he's an S rank missing nin I don't think four tails will be enough. If I take two pills my body will gain enough durability that I'll be able to withstand six tails, but I'll probably collapse from exhaustion afterward, Naruto thought about what to do, in the end he took two pills and started channeling Kurama's chakra. He slowly changed from his version 1 state to his version 2 state with six tails. Naruto's version 2 state was massively different from his 1 state, now Naruto looked like a mini Kyubi his body was covered by a deep crimson coat in the shape of a fox with six tails, his eyes were nothing more than white orbs, and a partial fox skeleton covered his body. Orochimaru at first smirked when he saw Naruto in his version 1 state, the smirk then turned to a look of shock when Naruto went to his version 2 state. Impossible. The boy is only 12 years old, his body shouldn't be strong enough to withstand six tails of power, thought Orochimaru. Sasuke just stood in fear at the amount of power and chakra Naruto was releasing. How? What is this chakra he's using? It's just like the chakra he used in Nami no Kuni except this is more powerful and evil, thought Sasuke. Kayubi Naruto let loose a powerful roar until he disappeared in a blur and punched Orochimaru sending his though a tree and crashing into the ground forming a large crater. Orochimaru stood up and realized he needed to end this quick before the Hokage and his Anbu came. Over near Naruto he did some quick hand, claw seals and summoned Hideki his messenger fox. Hideki was surprised when he appeared and his summoner was using six tails of his master's chakra. How may I help you Naruto-sama? asked the small fox. Hideki I need you to stick around near me, 
When I collapse from exhaustion the Sandame and his Anbu will try to take me out of the exam. Your job is to tell the Sandame that Orochimaru, the S-rank criminal from Konoha is inside the village and I try to fight him using your master's chakra. Also tell him not to take me out of the exams, I'll be fine and should wake up in a few hours, answered Kayubi Naruto. Very well Naruto-sama, I will perform you orders, Hideki then went and hid in the shadows near his summoner. Naruto used his speed and appeared in front of Orochimaru, he saw Orochimaru performed some quick hand seals and slammed his hands into the ground. Kuchiyose. Edo Tensai. Yelled Orochimaru. Naruto's eyes widened, it looks like he was able to improve on the Edo Tensai, but who could he have that would be a match for me in my six tails state? A coffin rose from the ground with the number one on the lid, the lid opened and Naruto's eyes widened even more when he saw the Shodam Hokage. Kit this is very bad, do not let the SHODAIME catch you if he does it's all over, yelled Kurama as the bad situation arises. Orochimaru smirked and inserted a kanai with an instructions tag into the Shidaim's head, his head rose up and his eyes turned completely white, the Shodem rushed Naruto and punched him in the face sending him back into a tree. Orochimaru used this chance to get to Sasuke, since he didn't have enough time he would have to give Sasuke his curse mark and leave quickly before the Hokage arrived. Edo Tensai Shodem vs Six-Tailed Naruto Naruto was knocked out of his shock when the Shodem punched him into a tree, he quickly rushed the Shodem and punched him into the ground forming a huge crater. Naruto jumped back and put distance between himself and the resurrected Hokage. Damn it! What the hell am I going to do? The only way to stop him is to seal him, but I don't have any sealing tags. Even if I did the minute I exit my version 2 state I'll collapse from exhaustion, thought Naruto. This is quite the situation, your notes on this jutsu said that sealing or the summoner deactivating the jutsu is the only way to stop the reanimated corpse. Try and hold him off until the Anbu get here, if he uses his Mokaton powers to suppress me I'm going to be gone for at least two days said Kurama. Naruto decided he would just have to buy his time until the Sandame arrived, he was knocked out of his thoughts when a wooden tentacle erupted from the ground and tried to wrap around him. He dodged the tentacle only to be ambushed by more tentacles, he looked around and saw that there were wooden tentacles coming in from all sides. He looked for an opening and found one, he immediately jumped through and avoided the trap, and he continued running from the pursuing tentacles and ran toward the Shodem. Fire Style Demon Fox Hellfire Naruto released fire from his mouth toward the Shodem who in turn did some quick hand seals and a half dome protected him. He noticed the wood stopped chasing him and continued his attack, he used his claws to break the wooden dome and slash the Shodem into a tree. He then tilted his head up and gathered positive black chakra and negative white chakra using his tails forming a small, dense, purple sphere of chakra. He then swallowed the sphere and his body gained tremendous weight from all the dense chakra inside his body. Smoke escaped his mouth and Naruto spit out the concentrated energy, Bijudama. A bright beam of chakra rushed the Shodem Hokage. The Shodem had barely enough time to slam his hands into the ground, layer after layer of wood rose to protect him, the beam of chakra impacted the wood and a large cloud of smoke covered the area. Naruto waited to see what had happened to the Shodem, he didn't expect wooden tentacles to rise from the ground and wrap around him. He struggled to get out of the tentacles grasp, but the wood was suppressing his power. The Shodem emerged from the smoke performing hand seals. Naruto recognized the seals he was performing as the Shodem's technique, Hokage style 60 year old technique, enclosed hermitage entering society with bliss bringing hands. Naruto struggled even more against his restraints, but it was futile as the Shodem slammed his palm into Naruto's chest and attached a blue strand of charka. Pillars of wood rose around Naruto to suppress Kayubi's chakra and keep Naruto still, the kanji for, sit, appeared on the Shodem's palm and he forced Kurama's chakra back into his seal. Kurama screamed in pain as his chakra was forced back into the seal and he lost consciousness. On the outside the six-tailed cloak slowly receded and Naruto's body emerged, when the jutsu was over Naruto fell to the ground unconscious and exhausted. A coffin rose from the ground and the Shodem stepped inside now that his mission was accomplished, the coffin sank into the ground leaving an unconscious Naruto and a hiding Hideki. Hokage Tower Serutobi was currently sitting in his office doing paperwork when he felt a powerful, evil chakra that he recognized. An Anbu barged into the room as Serutobi was putting on his battle armor. Hokage-sama! Screamed the monkey-masked Anbu. I've already felt the chakra, 
alert two Anbu squads and have them follow me into the forest of death, commanded the Hokage. Hi! shouted the Anbu as he left to relay the orders of his leader. What could have possibly happened that you need to use that chakra Naruto-kun? thought the Sandame as he jumped out the window. Orochimaru vs Sasuke Sasuke was slowly getting over his shock and preparing to get Sakura to get the hell away from Orochimaru. His ninja senses kicked in and he dodged a kick from the snake Sanin, he jumped to the adjacent branch and did some quick hand seals. Fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu, thought Sasuke as he shot six fireballs toward Orochimaru. Orochimaru easily dodged and sent snakes from his sleeve to wrap around Sasuke. The snakes wrapped around Sasuke only for Sasuke to turn into a log. Orochimaru turned around to see Sasuke trying to hit him with shuriken, Orochimaru smirked and side-stepped the shuriken. He rushed Sasuke intent on finishing his and giving him his curse mark, once Sasuke got his mark he would have to leave quickly. Sasuke was exhausted and his small rest only helped a small bit, he was starting to feel exhausted again and slow. Orochimaru used this weakness and extended his neck to an unimaginable length, his head neared Sasuke's neck who was too exhausted to dodge properly. He sunk his fangs into Sasuke and backed away as a curse mark with three tomo appeared on his neck. Orochimaru then noticed that he couldn't feel Kayubi's chakra and had the resurrected Shodem go back into his coffin. He turned his attention back to Sasuke as he sank into the ground, you will come to me seeking power Sasuke-kun, the power to kill Itachi that I can give you. Sasuke listened and once Orochimaru was gone he fell unconscious. Hokage with Anbu Serutobi and his Anbu entered the forest and ran toward the Kyubi's chakra, all of a sudden the chakra was cut off and they couldn't feel it anymore. They headed into the direction of the chakra and arrived in a clearing five minutes later. Serutobi could see Naruto face down in the dirt, bloodied and his cloths ripped up. Anbu take him to the hospital, commanded Serutobi. I wouldn't do that if I were you, said a hidden voice. All the Anbu tensed and drew their weapons ready to protect their leader. Hideki appeared from the shadows in front of the Hokage. I remember you, your name is Hideki? asked Serutobi. That's right Hokage-sama, I am one of Naruto-sama's messenger foxes, answered Hideki. Why are you here? asked the Hokage. He asked me to deliver you a message in case this happened. He told me to tell you he need to go in a six-tailed state in order to fight off someone named Orochimaru an S-ranked criminal of Konoha, he knew once he released this much chakra he would collapse afterward and alert you and your Anbu, he also told me to tell you not to take him out of the exams, he will wake up in a few hours and want to continue the exams, explained Hideki. Serutobi frowned, did he tell you why Orochimaru was here? No, he only had me relay the message to you and carry him off somewhere safe where he can recover, answered Hideki. How is it possible that Orochimaru could have been able to escape a Jinchuriki with six tails of power? asked a mole-masked Anbu. Orochimaru wasn't the one that fought Naruto-sama, he performed a strange jutsu that summoned what looked like the Shodem Hokage who had Mokaton powers. Naruto-sama was no match and was captured by its Mokaton jutsu and suppressed my master's chakra, explained Hideki. Serutobi frowned deeper, so you decided to use that jutsu Orochimaru? Very well. What about his other teammates? asked the Hokage. From what I saw it looked like the Uchiha was over there, Hideki pointed toward another clearing. Other than that I was watching Naruto-sama's fight, responded Hideki. The old Hokage motioned for the Anbu to go towards the Uchiha's last known location. Hideki went over and put Naruto on his back, he ran towards another clearing under a tree and stood guard to prevent anyone from trying to kill his summoner. With Sakura Sakura was running through the forest carrying Sasuke, when she had woken up she saw some pale head with a long neck bite Sasuke and give him a strange mark. When the person had left she had run over to Sasuke and saw he was unconscious, she picked up her crush and ran as fast as she could and hid under a tree. She wondered where Naruto was, she squashed that thought and continued to worry about Sasuke. She had set up a perimeter with traps so no one could sneak up on her while she protected Sasuke and waited for Naruto to find them. She continued to watch Sasuke and worry about her precious Uchiha. Sasuke kun, please be all right, thought Sakura as she continued to monitor her surroundings. With Serutobi, all eight Anbu kneeled before their leader in the forest. Report, said Serutobi in an authoritative voice. The lizard masked Anbu spoke up first Hokage sama, we did not find Uchiha Sasuke, 
it seems he was taken and whoever took him did their best to cover their tracks. The hawk masked Anbu spoke next. We have also collected evidence that Orochimaru had indeed been here in the forest and signs of battle were found. The Sandame sighed, very well. Anbu Squad 8 go and inform the Anbu commander that as of now the village is at Code Red. Anbu Squad 13 gather the council so that I may tell them about the situation. Orochimaru in the village is not to be told to anyone under Jonin rank or civilians, am I clear? All the Anbu gave a hi and left to accomplish their orders. The Sandame was left to his thoughts. Why are you here, my wayward student? If it has anything to do with the harm of Konoha, I will make sure you do not leave the village. I will make sure I finish what I started all those years ago. Serutobi made his way out of the forest and toward the council room where he was already feeling the headache coming. One day later, Naruto woke up one day after he had been defeated by the resurrected Shodam Hokage. He looked around and saw he was under a tree in the forest of death with Hideki standing guard. Hideki, how long was I out? asked Naruto. You were only out for a day, Naruto sama, responded the small fox. Naruto stood up and stretched to work out the kinks in his body. He checked himself over and saw that all his cloths were torn and some of his injuries had scabs instead of being fully healed. Naruto sat in a meditative position and went into his mindscape. Mindscape Naruto entered his mindscape and found himself a forest. Except this forest wasn't filled with life it was quiet and eerie. All the trees looked like they had been set on fire and was only left blackened from the flames. He looked in the distance and saw Kurama laying down unconscious with a seal around his neck. Looks like he was right when he the Shodem would have him knocked out, thought Naruto. Naruto then gave a sinister smirk and climbed onto Kurama's back, he then imagined pink bows and tied them on him head and each of his tails. He then activated his Sharingan to memorize this moment and blackmail Kurama later. He then left his mindscape to continue the exams, outside world. Naruto left his meditative position and turned to Hideki. Thanks Hideki for watching over me, you can go home now, said Naruto. Not a problem Naruto-sama, Hideki bowed before disappearing in a puff of smoke. Naruto quickly unsealed a new pair of cloths to replace his torn cloths. He was now wearing his black anbu pants, a kanai holster, extra holsters for shuriken and scrolls, dark blue shirt, red and black jacket, and steel-plated gloves. Naruto looked around and had no idea where he was, he sniffed the air and caught the scent of Sakura. He jumped on the trees and made his way toward Sakura's direction, he arrived to what looked like a fight 15 minutes later. Sakura was being held by Huhi the girl from the Odo team while her teammates watched, below the tree he could see Sasuke unconscious and Lee defeated a few feet from the one-eyed Odo genin. Instead of taking care of your hair like a useless civilian, you should have trained to be a shinobi. Now you're going to die, said the Odo Kunoichi as she positioned a kanai on her throat. Naruto threw a three-pronged kanai at the Otto Kunoichi. The kanai buried itself in her leg and she screamed in pain. Ah, who the hell did that? She screamed as she released Sakura and tried to stop the bleeding. Naruto teleported to the kanai that had hit her. He then unsealed his katana and stabbed her through the chest before she could realize what had happened. Kin, yelled Zaku. Well, what do we have here? The little Odo Genin, I was wrong you are strong, well as strong as Sakura, though I would take that as an insult than a compliment. Naruto was nonchalantly wiping the blood from his katana on Kin's jacket. Naruto, yelled Sakura in relief, you bastard, I'll kill you, yelled Zaku as he positioned his arms up. Decapitating airwaves, deadly blasts of air left his hands toward Naruto. Naruto yawned and easily sidestepped the air. He smirked and ran toward Zaku, he would dodge as Zaku wasted chakra repeating the same attack over and over again. He appeared behind Zaku with his katana drawn, unfortunately Dosu had gotten near Naruto and activated his melody arm. Naruto fell to his knees as Dosu's attack affected his inner ear, Zaku smirked and pointed his arms at Naruto intent on finishing the job. Naruto gained enough of his senses to dodge the attack sloppily and get a cut on his left arm and leg. He put some distance from the two and took some deep breaths, since Kurama was still unconscious he couldn't repair whatever Dosu's attack had done. Not bad, it looks like I have to be careful of that ing arm of yours. It looks like you both use your arms for your attacks, I'll just have to rip them off, said Naruto with a smirk. Naruto gained most of his senses and started doing hand seals, fire style, 
Phoenix Flower Jutsu. Ten fireballs headed toward the two Auto Genin, they were both separated and Naruto made two shadow clones to distract Zaku while he takes care of Dosu personally. He stood in front of Dosu and started making hand seals, earth style, earth flow spears. He slammed his hands into the ground and sharp spears of earth rose from the ground and almost impaled Dosu had he not jumped into the air, unfortunately Naruto had expected this and used his next attack. Fire style, fireball jutsu, yelled Naruto as a fireball hit Dosu in midair. Dosu had used a substitution to avoid Naruto's fireball and came up from behind. Dosu came up behind Naruto and activated his melody arm, he was surprised when, Naruto, exploded. Great clone explosion, I always wanted to try that, said Naruto as he jumped down from the tree. Naruto did some quick hand signs and called out his attack before Dosu could recover. Fire style, burning ash, Naruto exhaled a cloud of ash and clicked his teeth to turn the ash into an inferno. When the fire cleared it revealed a badly burned Dosu face down on the ground, but still breathing. As Naruto approached he unsealed his katana and stabbed it through his melody arm, Dosu screamed in pain as the katana pierced his arm. You smell a lot like a certain snake I know, what do you know about Orochimaru? asked Naruto. Dosu's eyes widened, I'll never tell you about Orochimaru-sama. Naruto smirked and sliced off Dosu's melody arm, Dosu screamed in agony as he lost a lot of blood from his severed arm. I'll ask again, what do you know about Orochimaru? Never, you're wasting your time, said Dosu defiantly. Naruto got annoyed he then picked up Dosu and looked him in the eye, Naruto activated his Mangekio Sharingan. Naruto used his Sukuyomi on Dosu, after 10 hours in the Sukuyomi world and 2 seconds in the real world Dosu cracked. I'll tell you what you want to know, just stop for the love of Kami. Yelled Dosu. Naruto dropped Dosu and unsealed his katana again to put it at Dosu's throat. Talk, said Naruto in a serious voice. Orochimaru sent us here to kill Uchiha Sasuke and get into the final round of the Chunin exams, he also has an invasion planned using Odo with the help of Suna during the final round of the Chunin exams. He plans on releasing the Suna Jinchuriki during the round and have his forces invade from the outside of the village. That's all I know I swear, pleaded Dosu. Okay now time to get rid of some loose ends, said Naruto as he prepared to kill Dosu. Dosu pleaded for his life until Naruto sensed an evil and foul chakra, although not as evil and foul than Kurama's it was still noticeable. Well it looks like things got a lot more interesting, said Naruto with a smirk. He turned back to Dosu and activated his Kamui, he ed in Dosu to join the Aim Genin where they would both be used as Edo Tensai sacrifices. All of a sudden he received his Shadow Clone's memories and from what he could tell, Orochimaru's cursed seal had finally manifested and Sasuke was using its power to kill Zaku. He teleported to the kunai left over from his ambush of kin. When he arrived he saw that Sasuke was trying to pull Zaku's arms off, while Sakura was yelling for him to stop. He also noticed that teams 9 and 10 were watching as Sasuke went mad. Sakura made a move to try and stop Sasuke, but Naruto stopped her by grabbing her hand. Naruto, what the air are you doing? Let go I have to stop Sasuke-kun, yelled Sakura as she fought from Naruto's grip. No Sakura this is the way the shinobi world is, it is covered in blood those who don't want to spill blood and bring death have no business being a ninja, said Naruto as he tightened his grip on Sakura. Naruto then turned his attention to Sasuke, Uchiha hurry up and kill him so we can get to the tower and not be the last ones to get there. Don't worry Dobi, I'll make this quick said Sasuke with a maniacal grin. No Sasuke-kun don't do it. Don't be like Naruto, yelled Sakura as she continued to struggle out of Naruto's grip. All of a sudden Naruto stiffened and let go of Sakura, Sakura ran toward Sasuke to stop him. Naruto looked in the corner of his eyes and saw Nara Shikamaru with his shadow extended toward him and Yamanaka Ino in her family's mind transferred jutsu hand position. Shadow possession jutsu success, Ino hurry up and enter his mind so we can tie him up. Yelled Shikamaru. Right. Mind transfer jutsu. Ino left her mind and went into Naruto's, not knowing what she had gotten herself into. Naruto's mindscape. Ino found herself inside Naruto's mind and saw all around her were burned trees and black soil. 
She continued walking and saw a giant fox with nine tails. You made a big mistake coming here Ino, said a voice behind her. She turned around and saw Naruto, what the hell is that? Naruto chuckled darkly, that Ino is the Kyubi no Kitsune, it's sealed inside my body and protects my mind from people like you and your family. Naruto noticed that Kurama was waking up, you're waking up earlier than you said, have a nice nap? Damn it Kit, I told you not to get caught in the Shodem's Mokutan Jutsu but no you decide to sit still and wait for him to step out of the smoke. Of all the idiotic, Kurama stopped his rant when he saw the shocked Ino. Kit, who the in the hell is this? Asked Kurama, why this is Ino, a fellow Konoha genin that made the mistake of coming into my mind. Now she has to pay the consequences, eat her, explained Naruto. Ino was knocked out of her shock when he said, eat her. With pleasure it's been a while since I have had human. Kurama lunged at Ino who in turn screamed in fear forgetting she could cancel her jutsu. Make sure you don't digest her, I want to use her as a bargaining chip if the situation arrives or one hell of a joke, said Naruto with a dark laugh. Kurama looked annoyed, you tell me to eat her, and then you tell me not to digest her then where the hell do you want me to put here? I have no idea, maybe you should put her inside you head and make her experience her worst fears. It would be hilarious when she comes out a broken kunoichi. Kurama gave his own grin, can I make her into a vegetable? No I need her to be broken, but not that broken, said Naruto. Kurama gave a disappointed look, way to take the fun out of it. Anyway I should get going outside world as Shikamaru and Choji watched in anticipation, Ino's body let out a piercing scream and went limp. Damn that was weird having another person in my mind said Naruto as he saw he was still caught in Shikamaru's shadow possession. Nara you better release me before I kill you, we may be from the same village but I can still kill you, threatened Naruto. What the hell did you do to Ino, yelled Shikamaru. Naruto smirked. Why whatever do you mean, I haven't touched her. You did something in your mind, otherwise she would be back in her body. Aren't you the smart one, fine I'll tell you what I did. But first you have to answer a question. Do you know what a Jinchuriki is? asked Naruto. Shikamaru gave him a confused and angry look. No I don't, what does this have to do with what you did to Ino? I'm disappointed, you seem so smart but it looks like I misjudged you. A Jinchuriki is a human who has had one of the nine biju that roam the world sealed inside of them. These Jinchuriki are very strong because they have an unlimited chakra source and are protected from people like the Yamanaka clan, explained Naruto. Shikamaru was sweating as his jutsu continued to weaken, how does it protect them from the Yamanaka? Naruto laughed, they have biju trapped inside their minds Nara, what do you think happens when a Yamanaka goes into the mind of a Jinchuriki? Shikamaru thought about it for a minute before going pale and whispering. What was that Nara? Shikamaru spoke louder this time, they eat them. Ding, ding, ding we have a winner, turns out you are smart Nara said Naruto sarcastically. Shikamaru turned red with rage, bring her back. What part of eat don't you understand Nara, she's gone, said Naruto. Shikamaru and Choji gave shocked faces until Naruto continued, but, I might be able to convince my tenant to spit her back up. If you can somehow get into the tower with the unconscious Ino, I'll convince him to spit her out and let her out. Choji had a hopeful look while Shikamaru had a scowl on his face, fine. We'll do it, but you better hold your end of the deal. Choji picked up Ino's limp body and followed Shikamaru to the tower. Naruto turned around and saw everyone was staring at him wide eyed, even the still alive Zaku. Oh, yeah, I forgot about you guys. He turned his attention to Zaku, shouldn't you be dead? Naruto looked around and saw Sakura crying over an unconscious Sasuke. I guess if they can't do it right, you do it yourself. He appeared behind Zaku quicker than anyone could notice with his katana drawn. He swung down and watched as his blade sliced diagonally through Zaku's body until it went out the other way. Both halves of Zaku's body slide before they fell apart and all the internal organs spilled out, everyone watched with shocked faces and emptied their stomachs when they saw all the gore while Naruto only smiled like a maniac. He started walking toward Team 9, what the hell are you doing here? Neji was the first to speak. We just came to pick up our idiot Lee, we'll be leaving now, Neji picked up Lee and turned to Tenten. Come along Tenten, said Neji with fear in his voice than his usual arrogance. 
Tenten followed suit and Naruto turned to see a crying Sakura over Sasuke. He made his way over until Sakura stood up with a kunai ready to defend Sasuke. Get away from Sasuke-kun you monster, yelled Sakura. Naruto only rolled his eyes, of all the kunoichi in my class one get you. Relax you pink-haired whore I'm not going to kill your precious Uchiha I still need him if I want to advance to the next round. He walked past Sakura who was still crying and looked at Sasuke's curse mark. I must admit this is some pretty complex seal. It has got all the necessary algorithms for a mind control seal, the algorithms for a chakra storage seal, and an algorithm for a chakra transformation seal. Overall Orochimaru can't have created this himself, there must be a seal master helping him. I wonder who, he was knocked out of his thoughts when Sakura came up next to him. Do you know what that is? Asked Sakura in an unusually subdued tone. He looked at her and mentally sighed in relief. It's a curse seal from Orochimaru, an S-rank criminal from Konoha. The seal indicates that it controls Sasuke's mind and takes his chakra while converting it into something more powerful than his regular chakra. Help me take him under the tree so I can seal it away from his body. Sakura nodded and helped move Sasuke under the tree again. He summoned a shadow clone and ordered it to go to the compound and get the items necessary for the sealing. The clone obeyed and left in a yellow flash. Naruto waited in silence for five minutes until the clone returned with chakra ink, a brush, and sealing paper. He turned to Sakura, while I write up the seal, you take off his shirt so I can apply the seal more easily. Sakura blushed but nodded nonetheless. After writing up a long and complex seal to negate the curse seal's mind control seal he also added some extra things. The Hiraishin formula since he knew with the power Sasuke had experienced he would go running to Orochimaru for more, once Sasuke was with Orochimaru he would teleport to him and get Orochimaru to give him what he wanted. He also added a suppression seal so that he would be able to automatically seal off the curse seal's power if he wanted to. The last thing he added was a kill switch where if activated the curse seal would release all of the stored chakra at once and overwhelm Sasuke's body killing him. He finished the seal and made his way over to an unconscious Sasuke and a blushing Sakura. He sat Sasuke up and placed his seal over Sasuke's curse seal, he then did some quick hand signs and poured chakra into his seal. Four star darkness seal, said Naruto as the seal left the paper and crawled onto Sasuke's skin. When he lifted the paper he saw that Sasuke's seal was surrounded with what looked like two overlapping stars with seal algorithms instead of ink lines. He then created a shadow clone to go to the tower and plant a Horishin Kanai near the entrance so they wouldn't have to deal with any other teams on the way there. There it's done, we'll rest here until he wakes up then we'll go to the tower. Sakura only nodded and continued to watch over Sasuke as Naruto just leaned back on the tree root and closed his eyes thinking. I wonder what Karen Chan is doing. Namikaze clan compound. Karen was walking around the enormous house, exploring the house. The previous day she had explored the training grounds and the basement, today she was exploring the second floor. When she had finally reached the last room she hadn't explored, she opened the door and was surprised with what she saw. Clones at least fifty running around the large room looking through books and taking notes, one of the clones noticed her and walked over. Can I help you Karen Chan? Asked the clone. Karen blushed slightly at the clone. I was just exploring the house, what is this place? This is the library, study. It's where the clones do research on new techniques and sealing methods for the boss. Right now we are trying to find a way of improving two of boss's techniques but it's really tough finding a solution, explained the clone. Maybe I can help. I'm getting bored walking around the house, said Karen. Sure. It wouldn't hurt having a new mind helping, since we clones are basically the same mind, you might be able to find something we couldn't, replied the clone. Come with me so I can show you the techniques we are trying to improve. The clone led Karen outside to the training grounds and created four shadow clones, he ordered them to perform the futon, recentrican. The clones did as instructed and two threw the attack which in turn dissipated into thin air. The other two ran toward a tree where the jutsu exploded into a large dome of wind that left nothing but a crater. You see our dilemma, the jutsu is very destructive but it can't be thrown so the boss will get hurt every time he uses it. Interesting. What about the other jutsu? Asked Karen. The clone nodded and created four more shadow clones with the same instructions but instead to create the Katen. Rasen Moltov, Firestyle, Spiraling Moltov. 
Let's put some distance between ourselves, said the clone as he led Karen away. The first two clones performed the jutsu and tried to throw it, but it exploded and left a small crater in the ground. They turned to the other two who thrust the attack into a tree, the attack exploded and created a dome of red and white flames that left behind a large crater and scorched the surrounding earth. This one has a similar problem, except this one had a larger destructive power so thrusting this into an enemy would be suicide. We have already done enough chakra control that we would be able to do medical ninjutsu, but we still cannot throw the jutsu. We are out of options and we aren't finding any other, explained the clone. Karen put a hand on her chin and hummed in a thinking matter before she came to a realization. Have you ever thought about using natural energy? Asked Karen. We already thought of that and it sounded like a good idea. The only problem was that to learn how to harness natural energy you have to go to Mount Myoboku and undergo sage training. If the boss by some miracle was able to sign the toad summoning contract he would have to give up his fox contract. Also it would be easier for Konoha to track him since the toads are loyal to Konoha and could report him movements once he leaves the village, explained the Naruto clone. That's too bad, if only Naruto-kun had the Mokotan bloodline he would be able to use a different variant of sage mode, said Karen. The clone's eyebrow twitched. What did you say? I said that if Naruto-kun had the Mokotan bloodline he could use a variant of sage mode, since the history books said that the Shodem used his Mokotan sage mode to help defeat Uchiha Madara at the Valley of the End. The Naruto clone grabbed his hair and ripped it out, why the hell didn't we think of that? Karen was startled by the sudden outburst, what are you talking about Naruto-kun doesn't have the Mokotan bloodline, does he? Actually Karen, the boss does have it along with the Sharingan, responded the clone. The clone did some quick hand seals and slammed his hand into the earth. A tree grew from the ground and in front of a gaping Karen. The clone then turned to Karen with its Sharingan activated. Needless to say Karen was shocked that Naruto had two of Konoha's most powerful bloodlines. How? Asked Karen wanting to know. When the boss was younger, Kayubi rewrote his DNA to give him the Senju genes and Uchiha genes. Boss is basically one quarter Senju, one quarter Uchiha, one quarter Namikaze, and one quarter Uzumaki. Kurama also told him that if he ever had kids they would have a chance to inherit either the Sharingan or the Mokotan but not both, explained the clone. Anyway, we will have to get a clone to break into the Senju compound again and search for the scroll that contains information about the Mokudan Sage Mode. We should get inside and inform the other clones about this, said the clone. Karen only nodded and walked inside the house. Oh and Karen Chan, called the clone. Yes. Asked Karen. Thanks if it wasn't for you we might never had figured this out and the boss would have been stuck with two unusable jutsu, said the clone with a small smile. Karen blushed at the praise, the only thing that would make that better would be if Naruto was the one giving it, don't thank me I was just trying to be useful. Anyway I should go to bed, it's getting pretty late. Good night, said Karen as she made her way toward her room. Good night Karen Chan, said the clone as he entered the study and began giving orders to the other clones. Next day. Day 3 of the Chunin exams Sasuke woke up with a headache and no recollection as to what had happened the previous day. Sasuke tried to sit up but a headache kept him down. Ah what happened? Asked Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, yelled Sakura as she hugged Sasuke. Sakura let go, yelled Sasuke even though he was too weak to push her off. So you're finally awake, it's about time Uchiha, mocked Naruto. Sasuke looked over and saw Naruto was sharpening his katana with a rock. Shut up Dobi, when you're more useful than me you can mock me, scolded Sasuke. Naruto chuckled, actually Sasuke I am more useful than you, you receive a powerful, new power and you let the pink haired banshee stop you from testing out that power. All it took was one small hug from that useless and you out like a light. Sasuke scowled, what the hell are you talking about? Yesterday during our fight with Orochimaru he gave you a curse seal, it's a seal that over time siphons out your regular chakra and transforms it into something much more powerful. It's not as powerful as my biju chakra, but it's still pretty powerful. You were probably unconscious while it manifested and converted your chakra, that's when those auto genin attacked Sakura to try and kill you. Apparently she is like an attraction to losers, that weakling Lee tried to help her but he was defeated. When I got here she was already about to get her throat slit and I had to step in and save both your asses so I could continue on to the third round. After killing two of the auto genin, 
I moved on to the last one but you were already killing him so I let you have your fun. Unfortunately Sakura had other plans. She wanted to save her precious Uchiha from becoming a monster like me. If I'm a monster that all the ninja villages are just giant monster villages, there are people much worse than me and who have killed a lot more. Anyway, she stopped you from killing him and then I finished off the last one while you were unconscious, explained Naruto. Sasuke scowled at what Naruto had told him, if he was right then he must have developed some sort of feelings for her which was not all right. Sakura only stood there in terror, crying from the insults Naruto had just given her, she thought he was her teammate and he would never have treated her like that, she was wrong. Anyway let's get to the tower so we can finally get on with the exams, said Naruto as he grabbed both teammates shoulders and disappeared in a yellow flash. Tower they arrived at the tower and entered through the front door to see a riddle on the wall. If you do not possess heaven, gain knowledge and be prepared. If you do not possess earth, run through the fields and seek strength. If you open both heaven and earth scrolls, dangerous paths turn into safe paths. I think we have to open both the scrolls to know the answer. Uchiha you open the heaven scroll I'll open the earth scroll, said Naruto. Sasuke only gave an HN and threw Naruto the earth scroll while he took the heaven scroll. When they opened the scrolls Naruto noticed that the scroll contained a teleportation formula and threw it on the ground, Sasuke followed suit and threw it on top. Smoke exploded from the scrolls and when it cleared it showed none other than Hitaki Kakashi, their Jonin sensei. He didn't look very happy, he looked at Naruto especially. Congratulations on passing, Sasuke and Sakura go ahead I need to talk to Naruto, said Kakashi in his serious tone of voice. Once they left Kakashi turned his attention to Naruto, what did you do? What do you mean sensei? Asked Naruto in an innocent tone. You know damn well what I mean, Yamanaka Ino is in a mental coma and her father is furious. Shikamaru told his sensei what you told him and he in turn told Inoichi and now he wants your head. Yelled Kakashi. Naruto only laughed, wow this is hilarious, first of all I could care less if the Yamanaka clan head wants me dead. He can come after me like all the villager did in the past and I'll do to him what I did to them, kill him and deliver his body to his family. Second I told the Nara if he wanted Ino back I would try and convince Kayubi to spit her out, although he is a little reluctant to do so. Well you better get her out, or else the Hokage might not be able to stop the Yamanaka clan from killing you, warned Kakashi. Naruto laughed even louder, ha ha ha, you think a weak clan like the Yamanaka can kill me? they specialize in entering people's minds they aren't a fighting clan. Ino is in this situation because she tried entering my mind and made a horrible mistake doing so, if another Yamanaka tries to do the same they will suffer the same fate. Kakashi could only glare at Naruto and eventually Naruto cracked. Fine I'll try one more time to convince him, take me to where Ino is. Kakashi led Naruto upstairs where they had Ino, once Naruto was inside the room he could see everyone inside. Ino was laid down in the bed, Team Ten was on her left side, Inoichi was on her right side, and the Hokage was next to Inoichi with a serious face. Naruto could feel the tension rise when he walked in, Inoichi looked at him with a face of pure rage. You, Inoichi said pointing at Naruto. You better fix this or I will kill you, yelled the Yamanaka clan head. I'd like to see you and your pathetic clan try, smirked Naruto. Inoichi took a step toward Naruto, but was stopped by the Hokage. Naruto-kun. This is a very serious situation have you had any luck convincing your tenant of returning the Yamanaka heiress? Asked the Hokage in a serious tone. I think I can, but I will need him, Naruto pointed at Inoichi, to come inside my mind to retrieve her since she might be broken from being inside my tenant. Inoichi scowled but nodded nonetheless. Also tread carefully when you inside my mind. If you try something I have no problem letting him eat you as well, warned Naruto. Naruto got in a meditative position, while Inoichi walked up to Naruto and put his hand in his forehead. Mindscape Inoichi found himself in a burned out forest, he continued walking until he saw the exact creature he fought against 12 years ago, the Kyubi no Kitsune. What's this? Another snack, I hope you're tastier than that little girl from earlier, said Kurama as he licked his lips. Inoichi scowled and was about to retort when he noticed Naruto on top of his head. Afraid not, this guy is here to pick up the girl so be a good fox and spit her out, said Naruto. 
What if I don't want to? Maybe I already digested her have you ever thought of that? Said Kurama with a grin. You damn fox give me back my daughter, yelled Inoichi. Bad move Inoichi-san, said Naruto. You think a mortal can command me, the Kyubi no Kitsune, I should eat you here and have you join your daughter, yelled Kurama. Don't eat him, I already get enough problems from the civilian council I don't need more. Just spit out the girl Kurama, said Naruto in a bored tone. Tisk. Fine you can have her she wasn't very filling anyway. Kurama then spit out Ino who Inoichi caught and left Naruto's mind. Well, time to watch the fireworks, said Naruto with a smirk before he left his mindscape. Outside mindscape, Inoichi woke up and ran toward Ino's body where he put her mind back into her own body, everyone was silent Inoichi worked frantically to get Ino to wake up. Ah, screamed Ino as she woke up. Princess are you alright? asked Inoichi. D daddy, asked Ino. It's me princess, said Inoichi trying to comfort Ino. Daddy, yelled Ino as she dove into her father and cried. I it was H horrible, and Naruto H he's a m monster. Said Ino. Tell me something I don't know, said Naruto. Ino noticed Naruto was in the room and screamed. Ah, get away from me you monster. Naruto only laughed as Kakashi took him out of the room and Ino continued to cry. Once outside Kakashi slammed Naruto into a wall, slam. Ow what the hell was that for? What the hell is your problem? You just laughed as Ino had a mental breakdown caused by you. Yelled Kakashi. Naruto just chuckled, it's not my problem, besides I didn't cause it she brought this on herself when she entered my mind. You've changed Naruto, you aren't the caring and enthusiastic kid you were six years ago, said Kakashi. Naruto smirked. That's right that Naruto died six years ago. A new Naruto was born that same day the old died, a new Naruto that embraced his role as the demon the villagers forced him to be. A Naruto with the power to protect himself and the few people he cares about from the idiot villagers and the council. I guess I should blame myself. I should have fought harder to adopt you and give you a family so you wouldn't turn out this way, said Kakashi with a sigh. Oh don't worry about it. I know that you were my father's prized student and I knew you were denied by the council to adopt me. That only fueled my hatred for the villagers in the council, so if there is anyone to blame it's the council. Naruto started walking away from Kakashi to his team. Kakashi only shook his head and entered Ino's room again. How is she? Asked Kakashi. Inoichi responded, whatever she experienced it really messed up her mind. I already sedated her she'll have to be taken off active duty until I can evaluate just how damaged her mind is. Kakashi sighed, I'm sorry that my student did this Inoichi-sama, I will try to get him off this road of darkness he is traveling. Inoichi only nodded and picked up Ino, I'm going to take her to the hospital, she won't be able to participate in the preliminaries. Inoichi disappeared in a puff of smoke, leaving only the Hokage, Team 10, and Kakashi. Hokage-sama what will you do with Naruto? Asked Kakashi. There is nothing I can do. Ino Yamanaka made the mistake of using her jutsu and entering Naruto's mind. I'd like to think that Naruto couldn't do anything to dissuade his tenant from eating her, said the aging leader. That's bull. Naruto probably had the Kyubi eat Ino while she was in his mind, yelled Shikamaru. Everyone gasped. How did you figure it out Shikamaru? Asked Asuma. Shikamaru elaborated, when he told me he was a Jinchuriki, I figured that the only biju that attacked Konoha was the Kyubi 12 years ago. Naruto was born 12 years ago and he said he was also the son of the Yandaimi, it was pretty easy to figure out. Serutobi gave Shikamaru a serious face, Shikamaru-kun you and Choji-kun cannot tell anyone what you know about Naruto, it is an S-rank secret and warrants execution if broken. Shikamaru and Choji gave shocked faces, but why people need to know what Naruto is, yelled Shikamaru. Kakashi decided to explain, Shikamaru it isn't Naruto's fault he is this way, Naruto has been alone his whole life and has been hated by the entire village. He would have to endure the glares of hate and the occasional beatings of the villagers when he was younger, he was always a fun-loving and sweet kid. That changed when he was six years old and was almost killed by a couple of villagers, that day it seems the Kyubi made a deal with Naruto and started training him. Ever since that day Naruto has killed anyone that has tried to hurt him and has become distant and cold. He turned his attention to the Sandame, when he was a baby I would always put in requests for his adoption, but the council and the Hokage would always deny my requests. 
Once I had Naruto on my team it was too late to save him and this is how he turned out, a cold, uncaring person who finds fun in bloodshed and people's misery. Sarutobi had the decency to look ashamed, it was his fault Naruto turned out like this. Wow I didn't know he had it that bad, said Shikamaru with a sad tone. Anyway now that this situation is over and done with, let's get some rest since the preliminaries are in two days, added Asuma. Everyone nodded and left to their rooms, two days later. During the two days stuck in the tower, Naruto was slowly losing his mind and he wanted to kill someone. He sometimes wished he had left those auto genin alive so he could have killed them during the preliminaries, oh well no use dwelling on the past. All of a sudden a chunin entered his room to give him a message. Genin Uzumaki, you are to report to the arena for the preliminaries. It's about damn time, said Naruto as he grabbed his equipment and headed to the arena. Once he reached the arena he saw all the contestants were standing in the middle of the room, the Hokage was up on the rafters, and the Jonins were next to him. Once everyone was situated the Hokage began giving a speech about the reason they had Chunin exams and how it was to foster good relations between villages, Naruto tuned out the old fool and turned his attention to Gara. The past two days he had tried to talk to him, but all he would do was threaten to kill him and walk away it was annoying, he hoped he would has Gara and knock him down a peg. He turned his attention back to a sickly pale man with a sword preparing to talk. My name is Gekko Hayate, the proctor for the preliminary round we will be having tournament style round with 9 winners for the final round. If you think you are about to lose a round, forfeit. Killing is permitted but I will step in if the match is won, you are to stop when I say so. The first two names please stay down here, the rest head upstairs and wait for your names to be called. The screen began to randomly pick names and Hayate read the results, the contestants for the first round will be. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.